a very good evening to you all on behalf of department of physiology and internal quality assurance cell shurendranath college i welcome you all on today's virtual international webinar on student orientation biological sciences encompasses a wide range of subjects like physiology zoology botany microbiology genetics biochemistry molecular biology and biophysics and so on as we have tried to symbolize it in the left side of our welcome slide which you are watching now on the screen our goal is to give some guiding light to our beloved students of ug pg and research courses to find out their suitable path in future with success real success requires step after step choice after choice it demands education passion focus commitment and persistence so we designed this webinar to hear from eminent core physiologist medical physiologist and physiologist come expert of sub skill training this webinar for you dear student now i would like to invite our hod dr shukti chakraborty to deliver welcome address over to you ma'am एचओडी मैम शुक्ति चक्रवर्ती प्लीज गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू दोस हु आर जॉइनिंग अस फ्रॉम आवर अदर टाइम जोन्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ माय डिपार्टमेंट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी सुरेंद्रनाथ कॉलेज वेलकम यू ऑल टू आवर वेबिनार on career opportunities in physiology and allied sciences and soft skill development along with my colleagues today we have the honor of being joined by eminent speakers professor shonjit de professor department of physiology university of calcutta dr prashant priyo nayak additional professor all india institute of medical sciences jodhpur and dr shonali dasgupta certified soft skill trainer shingapur as we all know covid 19 has impacted our education available education opportunities and job market drastically has changed the future of work as we move on to this new future or the new normal there are some new avenues that are opening up along with that soft skill development have become even more important than before we therefore hope that today's webinar will help you learn about the current opportunities both in education and job and plan your career successfully and i am i am sure that this webinar will be of much meaning with that now i would like to request our principal sir dr indronil kaur to kindly inaugurate the webinar over to you sir thank you professor chakraborty i to welcome you all in this wonderful evening uh, in a virtual platform also with the uh, with the eminent speakers and the those who have already achieved their goals and want to share their knowledge with the students who are actually growing during this covid time we have been testing our own capabilities i would say we have been trying our best to learn from the difficulties and make our future much better or acquainted with the new normal situation i understand that our situation is also improving and also we are trying to acquaint ourselves and a correct i should say acclimatize ourselves in this new normal situation our students 
and also I feel they should be very hopeful because the morning sun will be rising after the COVID ends because we, I too believe we, along with them that tomorrow is ours. We have to make it happen and we have to see to it that we can deliver, we can do it during this tiring and testing time of ours. And whatever help is possible by the departments and the faculty members and the institution together will definitely make, make all efforts to make it sure that you gain the capabilities of becoming self-confident and self-reliant in this new normal situation. Hope you people all will be taking all initiatives to learn and mingle in the different situations and also learn from it to make your tomorrow much happier, more confident, and also a better tomorrow. With all this, I hope today's webinar will deliver whatever has been proposed to. And I also know that the eminent speaker who are with us in this platform today will make it sure that the students turn out to be more confident after the webinar is over. With all my blessings, I expect the webinar to, webinar to be a grand success. Thank you very much. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your wonderful, inspiring presentation lecture. Now, I would like to request our IQSC coordinator, Madam Dr. Shuchandra Chatterjee, to say uh, uh, a few words for this webinar. Over to you, Shuchandra. Uh, thank you, Shuktidi. Am I audible? Yes. So a warm and blissful evening to you all. On behalf of ITVC Shurandranath College, I welcome you all, honorable speakers, respected principal, all the dignitaries, faculty members, and students from various institutions around the globe who have virtually gathered here today yes. in this international level student orientation program, namely career opportunities in physiology. <laughs> So on behalf of IQSC Shurandranath College, I welcome you all, honorable speakers, respected principal, all the dignitaries, faculty members, and students from various institutions around the globe who have actually gathered here today in these international level student orientation program, namely career opportunities in physiology and allied sciences and soft skill development, organized by Department of Physiology in association with IQSC Shurendranath College. IQSC is immensely grateful to the physiology department for their real hard work and sincere effort to organize such a relevant and useful program, even amid this pandemic and inevitable lockdown period. The program will start with primary focus on career opportunities in biological sciences, and then gradually would move on to a more generalized sector, the soft skill development, which is a much needed skill set in current scenario. I sincerely hope the entire orientation program would be effective enough and help all the attendees to get equipped with the requisite knowledge about various career pathways. And finally, with the most desired soft skill set. Without much ado, it's now high time to move on straight to the technical session for which all the viewers are eagerly awaiting. I would now request Department of Physiology to proceed further. My best wishes are always with them. Over to you, Shuktidi. Uh, thank you, Shuchandra, ITSC coordinator, madam, for your inspiring words. 
All of us are eagerly waiting to hear from our resource person. Our first speaker is Professor Shanjit De. Professor De, uh, he is a professor of the Department of Physiology of University of Calcutta since 2005. He did his master's and PhD from Calcutta University. Professor De was a visiting scientist at MD Anderson Cancer Center, Houston, and overseas DBT fellow at University of California, USA. Professor De is actively engaged in teaching and research work over 24 years. His research work were published in a number of high impact factor peer reviewed journals. He is also holding various responsible administrative positions in different reputed institutes. Apart from his academic and administrative work, he is passionate to serve for his country with his dedicated research team. Today, Professor Day is here as he is always desirous to give some light to the students to move ahead in future life. Now, over to you, Professor Day. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bornali, uh, for kind introduction. And am I audible to everyone? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so without any further delay, I think uh, I would uh, share the screen and then uh, my, um, I would like to uh, uh, just let me share the screen first. So it is, uh, first of all, it is a wonderful opportunity for me that uh, you have given me the chance to uh, deliver on such a very, you know, favorite topic. So actually, uh, it is uh, one of my, uh, you know, uh, favorite job in my uh, earlier from my uh, undergraduate college. So um, it is a very pleasant duty, you can say. So, and uh, I am really, uh, I feel motivated uh, from the kind words of, uh, uh, from Dr. Indranil Kaur, uh, the respected principal sir of Surindranath College. I'm really grateful for his uh, words and for welcoming us. And also I would like to thank uh, uh, Shukti Di, uh, for uh, you know inviting me and for introducing me and obviously uh, Dr. Shuchandra Chatterjee for her kind words and motivating uh, I mean everyone I think they are doing really wonderful job and uh, obviously Bornal for you know uh, conducting this meeting and everything okay so I think without further delay this is for the essentially for the students but uh, I believe that uh, this is a wonderful subject that I have chosen after my higher secondary uh, course. Uh, and I'm really grateful that I have uh, pursued this, uh, this course. Okay, and uh, uh, now I'm um, I'm uh, professor of physiology, as you can see, as you have, I have been introduced. Uh, let me share the full screen. I think it uh, then, is it visible, right? Yes. Okay, all right. So um, I'm uh, actually representing my alma mater. So it is, uh, it is at least 160 years old. And obviously it is a heritage institute as uh, everybody knows, it does not uh, need any explanation or any further elaboration. And I'm also representing my uh, 110 year old, more than 110 year old, uh, uh, my department of physiology. So it has a very, you know, uh, a very nice uh, uh, path of history and through which uh, this department uh, has evolved. And I'm very uh, proud to say that uh, Professor Nilaton uh, Sharkar, Sir Nilaton Sharkar and uh, Rabindranath Tagore was uh, uh, kind of, they uh, conferred patronage to our department at once upon a time. And obviously, uh, Prashant Chandra Mahalana Vish was behind all the, you know, uh, building this department and everything. So we are really grateful. And, uh, this is not this is not that uh, building we are actually uh, we teach and we do research and everything this is our administrative building the famous uh, darbhaga building and the building we are we work the department of physiology is um, actually located it is also a very heritage place and uh, i am uh, just motivate i would like to motivate my students my next generation to visit the campus and also the neighborhood also the neighborhood is, you know, the, it is wonderfully, uh, it is a heritage place. First of all, it is uh, uh, 
uh, in this area uh, thakur ramkrishna dev came uh, to visit uh, vidyasagar okay isha chandra vidyasagar and then it is uh, the entire area was you know uh, the once it was the area of the zamindari of uh, raja ramohan rai and now we are celebrating 250 years of his uh, uh, birth centenary fortunately <clears throat> and just be across the road of uh, acharya pobulo chandra road so it is the god park the famous uh, you know uh, the god park of uh, where shotuj rai was born so can the famous uh, stories of feluda and uh, lalmohan ganguli and uh, santos dotto actually was born in uh, somewhere nearby in the uh, manikchola area so this is a uh, very nice uh, you know uh, nice stories so anyway i without further giving that uh, you know stories and all these things but uh, i think uh, once it is unlocked uh, the students those who are in undergraduate and also those who have not uh, gone through uh, please have a heritage walk okay in and around 5 km radius so it is a wonderful place to visit i i can assure you would be ms it is a goose bump uh, uh, you know kind of situation or feeling that i can assure okay and many other many other uh, luminaries uh, were there and obviously uh, just beside our campus sir jc bos is uh, uh, you know uh, residential place so it was the boshu bigyan mundir mundir and fortunately uh, the the building we work it is the working place of the Uh, of uh, professor shotan binat bosh and meghna saha okay and nr sen and uh, you just name any um, and gyan chandra bosh and there are numerous luminaries those who work in our science college that is a famous science college so having said that i just uh, give you that prelude i mean so just uh, believe in our heritage okay and we had wonderful heritage uh, during our renaissance time and also we should not wait for another renaissance to come okay and it is the renesha should come uh, uh, through uh, your hand okay and there are a lot of things to do okay so now it is a it is a, a kind of uh, i'm just uh, told uh, some many words the career opportunities in uh, uh, in physiology and allied sciences and this is uh, i just i, I could not uh, tempted myself to say some words on this heritage and all and now i ask you one question for the students do you like uh, to own this so this uh, famous uh, you know this is a you know the this type of you know career so this is also a career right and fortunately they, this photograph was taken by me in purulia while i was uh, you know roaming i was uh, visiting purulia so as i see <laughs> coincidentally there is a you know one sign one uh, you know uh, wall painting was there in the bsc and if i correlate these things so after doing bsc or what so that door would be closed or what or would we uh, get this uh, career for our uh, future endeavor or what so i just uh, or sorry uh, or like this so this is the the famous person of uh, he is the owner of uh, amazon who uh, who actually has will go to you know uh, will ride the blue origin okay for 15 minutes of space walk and all so just uh, you you decide dr. and the dr is, day yes dr day yes slides are not changing uh still slides are not changing okay still it is not changing no it's it's in the past slide only oh really okay just uh, then actually there is one sound is coming i don't know why but my slide i can change but in the shared shared screen it is only first slide is seen okay okay let me do it uh, once more then sorry for that and uh, new share is it uh, visible now full screen yes full screen visible yeah, is it now it full screen, screen? is it changing no it's not changing let me share just a second okay so
Yeah, now it. it So go to slide show. Yeah. Slide show. Slide show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now we are in the third slide. Third slide. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so this was the first slide. Okay. First slide. Yes. So yes. actually, I I showed this one, or uh, so this was the slide that uh, I took. I was. Second slide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Continue, uh, please. I, I had a question to the you know students that do you like to own this so this uh, this carrier and uh, I took this photograph in Purulia and I uh, showed this there is a you know wall painting uh, you know some uh, some advertisement for the BSc program and I don't know after doing that BSc would they the door and their their opportunities be closed like that or what or they would uh, have a career like this or I don't know why it is the sound is coming anyway or like this. So this is the you know the Amazon owner and uh, he is having you know the the Blue Origin space uh, craft so and um, he will ride to space very soon. And now the qu question is the whether it is carrier or carrier. So now the carrier this uh, very word these are very you know simile kind of thing rhyming words. So it is it says in Bengal it is baho. So on the other hand, it is a person or a thing that carries, holds, or conveys something. And the carrier is the jibika, pesha, some sort of occupation. Okay. And as also, it is uh, it is a uh, that moves. So if, if the verb, if we consider the verb, then it moves swiftly and in an uncontrolled way. So you have to have your carrier in a very controlled, regulated way. So that is very important. Now, career. To set up your career, the goal or path has to be set up. Okay. Now, at your age, you are independent. Okay. So, I am considering the students of, uh, say, uh, uh, BSc. Um, I mean, the undergraduate and uh, also the postgraduates. So, now you have your independent mind, but don't feel ever that you are isolated. Okay. We are here. Your parents are there. Even seniors are there. So, they are, uh, you know, beside you to help you, and you have to. You have come uh, some sort of crossroad. So I'm just uh, uh, showing you and don't get lost at this point, okay? And this is uh, some kind of uh, kind of situation what now it is uh, you and you are kind of thinking whether I will take uh, uh, MSc or take uh, or should I, I'm feeling confused. Should I take some kind of entrepreneurship job or is it too late to decide my friends are earning say two lakhs per, uh, you know, per month or whatever. Or, uh, so I should have taken a job or something or that kind of feeling is there in your mind, I know. And then <clears throat> there are three things that is very, very important, okay, for your life, for everyone's, even for me. So one is the determination, then is the motivation and the judgment and the balance with the situation, okay? So that is very, very important, I, I say. And pay attention to certain English alphabets. So these are some prelude to again some prelude before I go embark on the actual you know career uh, routes. Okay, so that is that you have to be very alert, you have to be very aware, and you have to, that's why you can accomplish. So you have to be aware all the time throughout your career. So this is very crucial time. So you don't do ah, okay. So you plan it accordingly. Okay, even before you take up the BSc. I mean, if it's a very interactive session, it's very good. Then I would have asked you, yeah, I mean, why you have taken this uh, course? You have said that 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 you have you have that you have you have that you have said that you have that I have shown you. So it is, so then, once you have come to a path, so you now you decide, okay? Now you have to be alert. Now you have to be aware. You may have to be aware. You may have to be aware. You may have to be aware. Okay? Determine. And then it is determination, drive and dedication. So that is, these three words are also very important throughout our life, even for myself. And don't pay attention to luck. Okay? And obviously to lethargy. And yes, love. That is very important. And likes. Don't. And also for your uh, failures, 
don't give lame excuses okay so and rather you seek your limitation so that is another l so that is very important next is i would say that yes don't uh, you know forget to uh, you know get the determined mind don't forget to dream and don't forget to dedicate yourself okay and always remain positive and that is another very important is that your clarity of thought and the of your goal what you are doing so it is some sort of it is part of your awareness or whatever and perseverance okay chhede dile cholbe na thik ache ei chhede dewa ta khub kharap shei jonno ei oi swami bebekananda bolechen je ye tumi gita porar theke tumi rather football ta khelo bhalo kore so this is some sort of his words of perseverance ar eta to amra we know so everybody says study well saro bolen dadu o bolen didi mao bolen mao bolen sobai bolen je study well bhalo kore porashona ta mane ta ki so what is study well etai to ami bujhi na je study well mane ta ki amar kache study well mane je khub byapar je tuku porbo bhalo kore porbo so pay attention to each and every word and all the terms of your text okay so you should be very detail oriented at this stage okay ja hoye geche hs ba ye now you are you are uh, taking care of your own career so you have to be very detail oriented and that since your subject is you know biological science and you have to have that uh, freedom of correlation okay and you correlate every biological functions whatever you say theoretical er shonge tumi tomar actual uh, uh, tomar practical je situation seta ke tumi bishesh kore this is your you are uh, you know studying your discipline is physiology so you have the liberty to explain your body functions so that is very very important and another point is that think out of the box always so if you have not nurtured that okay so don't blame your syllabus of your school don't be, uh, uh, blame your syllabus of your college or something and but it is your liberty it is your thought and think out of the box so that is very very you know uh, you know important word you know key word for your success okay and that's why you stick to that point as question on that point on that research skill or whatever whatever their point is and don't read much read little but whatever you read you enjoy you have fun on that so there are so you know three idiots so what i believe is that so this is something like uh, so our foundation is based on our past so you cannot ignore your past so but we are we past is past so we have already we cannot go back to past so that's why what is very important is that to you know uh, you have to nurture our present to get our good you know future all right and now so this is having said that all these preludes and all so now i am uh, coming to you know uh, deliver something on the careers after the bsc in the physiology so for uh, for the bsc after uh, reading uh, i mean covering three years of uh, physiology courses you obviously you have that you know uh, opportunity to study masters for two years so you can study in your own university either in vidyasagar university calcutta university kolkata university north bengal university wherever so there is a two year course is there and then you can also take the technical jobs then you can uh, so there is also liberty of the administrative jobs and obviously you can take take some sales jobs and that is very very issue, uh, critical point i mean what is your uh, you know you cannot ignore your society you cannot ignore your family i mean what is your demand of your family so i won't say that okay so uh, even uh, if your family demands so you have to you know uh, you know for for some points so you have uh, you know that have that gene no okay i will complete my msc but my family says that why i have to earn so better to take some technical jobs even you have to decide it uh, or during your uh, you know uh, uh, during your course okay so take some kind of jobs if you uh, like or if you, you demand you know, as far as and the demand of your uh, situation i would say and obviously the careers after the msc you know uh, obviously since it is a research based subject i would uh, one should opt for the research and obviously uh, anyone can uh, opt for the administration also and obviously the sales job is always open and also some uh, someone can take up the technical job as well okay so that is always there but, but having Uh, uh the msc degree in addition to the bsc degree obviously the chances of getting the technical jobs or uh, you know other jobs would be much better because their foundation and their training is uh, further right so they kind of uh, uh, are acquainted with much more knowledge 
much more techniques and so on and so forth right so that is quite understandable so that's why so better to opt uh, a master degree after your bsc okay uh, <clears throat> so next is uh, as having said that i uh, the prelude so again now i think you have decided now at this point you can uh, at least have some kind of uh, you know uh, career goal so at least you can decide something again i would say the planning is very important right from the right from your you know uh, even before you take up the uh, bsc that is during after you pass the uh, hs so you should plan accordingly and in a very determined way whatever course you are taking you have to be very faithful you have to be very honest and then you will be very determined gain some confidence and pursue it and obviously again i use that word the perseverance yes the there would be many road blocks and many things will come okay so there are many things will come uh, on your uh, road so this is a very long journey okay so this is uh, you, uh, this is not a short course or something so immediately after bsc uh, so you can take the masters you may take advantage of the 60 40 rule in the in your own university uh, if it happens as it happened uh, the last but other year uh, so uh, during the pandemic time it was uh, somewhat uh, it was altered uh, last year for the uh, for that uh, admission so i don't know what will happen this year and the options for the mainstream subjects it is uh, i won't say that you cannot switch to some other subjects some sp uh, specialized allied subjects but uh, there are some advantages or some disadvantages and again it uh, it all lies with you so whatever you decide so if you don't feel like okay this is not my cup of tea i would i am not feeling well uh, taking this physiology anymore so better i would take uh, some neuroscience or something some specialized subject okay you can do it so many you know brilliant students they took the biophysics uh, molecular biology biochemistry my, my, microbiology in our university or some other universities okay so and also and many brilliant students obviously stay in the mainstream in the physiology we get it uh, very regularly even from the surendra college every year so i am very proud to say many of my friends many of my classmates were from physiology and they are some of them are uh, you know staying abroad some of them they are very well placed okay so <clears throat> again uh, uh, the uh, obviously as i mentioned the msc in physiology in the university and obviously you can take uh, the neuroscience is there in the uh, university of calcutta biophysics and molecular biology that is a very good subject biochemistry is also very good subject microbiology genetics biotechnology is also there these are all uh, uh, opportunities are there for the uh, in our university and there are some subjects are there also in uh, other university like uh, bard one as also uh, vidyasagar and kolani uh, university so you have if you have some prospective ideas to carry forward your career in the premier institutes then what would you do no i i want to do something else okay so i want to i i could not uh, you know uh, uh, gone into iisc okay so i had a dream going there but i somehow i could not pass it after hs because of some you know uh, i was involved with some other competitive exams and all so there are endless opportunities for you okay so during or before so planning is very very important that's why i told the joint uh, admission test for masters also known as the jam jam is there it is for you know uh, this is being conducted for entry for the joint or uh, dual degree of the msc phd or uh, Uh, only phd degree uh, for the programs at the iit iits and integrated phd program at the iisc okay for consolidating science as a career option for the bright students obviously and these postgraduate programs at iits and iisc offer a very high quality education and uh, high quality education uh, in their uh, respective disciplines comparable to the best in the world and the curricula for these programs are designed to provide opportunities to the students to develop academic talent leading to challenging uh, and rewarding professional life so you you must uh, you can opt for it okay so have please go through their websites please have their you know whatever their uh, 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 past year questions and all these things and their syllabi okay and then you go ahead okay then i uh, another interesting area that is not uh, so nurtured in particularly here but uh, in your individual capacity you can always opt for it okay so it may not be in your syllabus but sorry uh, it may not be in the syllabus but there are internships with some scientific academic or the societal activities so there are many commonwealth fellowship programs are there so you can opt for it 
so i would share this slide i and that would be in the uh, obviously in the youtube I, i hope so you can have this you can take this opportunity for the common fellowships for this internship program you can also opt for the uh, some internships uh, obviously it uh, based on some demand uh, based on say right now there are many internship programs have been advertised in the who site you can also opt for some internship program for the unicef it is round the year and uh, you uh, definitely you choose uh, uh, obviously of your area of interest and you enroll there okay and uh, sometime it works and sometime it does not why because uh, it, it is as far you know it is demand based obviously and if your cv and your uh, some basic uh, trainings uh, that matters okay so they actually call for uh, some uh, you know some people like you so but you have to enroll it so this is very very important and this is internship is sometimes it is paid and sometimes it is not and you can always go through their websites and you will find it and uh, it does not matter because it is just a 2 to 3 weeks program or may it may uh, uh, sometime it uh, you know stay for say 2 months or 4 months maximum okay so it, it will not hamper your study also okay so essentially it was a very good program for the you know when it was uh, you know it was offline not now it is uh, some you have to decide i mean whether if it is offline or online now at this in this pandemic situation so that depends on your on you and also your family so next is that unicef uh, have internship so i am not going into the, all these details it is from their website so so you have attained the 18 years old and all these things so you are obviously eligible and also there are couple of opportunities from the unicef and there are i would also like you to connect with uh, you know society membership so that is very very important so as you are reading physiology you must uh, enroll there as a student and these are obviously this is paid for the students but if you apply uh, that for some waiver you usually they waive their the fees and you must say that i am from the developing nation so kindly waive my fee so they will waive though it is very little for them say maybe it is a 25 dollar or 25 pound for them but it is a huge amount of money for us so you can uh, they always wait in many times they wait okay for the but you must enroll and you will see that there are sea of uh, you know activities there physiological society of uk and student main, uh, and all student centric not all student centric mainly research based publication based and many things but you would be very better trained very well trained by this physiological society of uk american physiological society and there are some specific societies those who are interested in the nutrition you can enroll for the uh, nutrition society of uk that is very active and they always you know connect with some kind of jobs and also internships that's why i am saying uh, you know highlighted these uh, you know their websites so now there are some opportunities for the technical jobs say after bsc even after msc so technical jobs in laboratories they actually require some training so if you have uh, say cell culture training animal handling antibody raising microbial uh, screening or testing say real time pcr sequencing sorry uh, sequencing in uh, next generation sequencing elisa okay don't uh, you know you will say sir why would I, how would i get this all these techniques amra ekhon practically korte pachhi na to shegulo ei sob technique gulo janbo kotha theke don't worry for it uh, at least in this situation some laboratories uh, for their purpose they are uh, you know after uh, taking they are actually uh, you know uh, they are training the you know interns okay and then they you know they uh, achieve some projects and something uh, for a short term basis or something and even many laboratories or government laboratories are also taking this you know uh, freshers also so that is this is for your exam uh, you know uh, information and i think you should be very aware of your situation you should be now there are many technique uh, you know uh, like uh, i am not naming any one you should uh, uh, from the online or internet you can find these kind of portals okay uh, so then also after bsc you may also opt for the administrative jobs like uh, uh, in indian administrative services through upsc exams and obviously you can take the wbcs to uh, you know when you uh, when w west bengal uh, public service commission uh, commission you know advertises this uh, you know wbcs uh, you know uh, program okay and you can if you have some okay so i won't stick to this you know um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, you know research jobs or phd or something like that you can always go for law or management courses all, as well all right so so this is all for your information that uh, so don't get confused but 
to plan accordingly okay so and then also i am uh, coming to the careers after msc obviously the phd in any from any reputed institute is obviously a, a good choice okay you should be prospective you should think ahead you should be positive mind so uh, the major uh, choice of exam should be national eligibility test net and also get so get actually uh, you know is not uh, will not give you the fellowship immediately for any project or pursuing your phd program but if if uh, some project fellowships are there you will be uh, selected uh, you can get that fellowship and also obviously you can offer the uh, jam exams uh, for the iits and iisc and most importantly if you plan accordingly after msc or during msc you can always take the jgbs so this is for the entry for the phd program in premier institutes like ncbs instem sinp bose institute icert or name any other institute so they have clapped i think i in the next slide uh, yes so there are couple of institutes you see that the, the you know i am not naming all these things but you will find the you know club of institutes that you can get into into it but you have to study well you have to get their syllabi i mean and then you have to go through very scrupulously i mean whatever they are uh, demand is another career you can opt for so that is a very lucrative one and i don't think that many people know of it that is a uh, bhava atomic research center so they actually train uh, you know uh, the uh, post graduates okay so after having this post graduate post, uh, post graduation what they do they uh, conduct one exam uh, this is the online uh, sorry they are uh, so they make i might conduct it online offline so that is their issue depending on the pandemic situation and various courses they offer and obviously there are courses of the biological science that's why i'm saying and uh, so that actually lead to even you can offer the phd and also uh, after their training they recruit uh, yourself as a as scientist so uh, once you you know get into into that uh, so you can if you plan accordingly you can have a job of a very uh, di institute that is department of atomic energy institute then there are obviously now i must say that though the the soft skills and everything would be uh, that part would be there after my talk uh, another uh, you know uh, esteemed uh, speaker would uh, say on that but i must mention there is a very important demand of this infographics then what is infographics so you can search of it and they actually this is kind of you can say the demand of the day when you find a textbook when you find your textbook very uh, you know uh, you know attractive and when you feel that uh, okay i should study this uh, uh, this particular textbook the barn and levy or the uh, kind of uh, i would say the um, uh, say strayer lubert strayer when when you feel interested if you find some uh, you know very nice and uh, illustrative uh, illustration okay that actually explains some figure or some kind of mechanism okay so that is the part job of the infographic uh, graphics and there is a if you have some flavor of you know uh, you know drawing or fine art so you can have this kind of infographics course so there are or you can join you can always uh, you can offer you can apply for any journal or uh, journal website or something or publishing house that okay i can draw well so please i would like to join as a uh, infographics okay and also if you have a very good skill of in english you can always take the job of the editing okay and there are you know high demand of this editing jobs even from uh, for the nature even for the science so they are now uh, opening some branches for the india okay so there are uh, many people are working there as interns and they always uh, uh, train them as their trainee and then eventually they recruit it okay and uh, i uh, actually knew some of the some of the some of not my yeah one of my students have joined there as infographics and also uh, many of them are working as that uh, you know in the editorial team and recently i found that nature master class uh, they have you know uh, uh, advertised one course that is very interesting course it would be obviously the paid course but again you can always uh, seek for the waiver uh, for uh, if it is very high value so then it is the communicating about the research one course and then is the research data management and in this pandemic time on since every all the journals all the scientific informations are coming you know online and now uh, from the uh, from your tea shop to every even your grocery people know everything about the corona 
so how all these common people have come across you know they are so well aware of this you know corona virus because of this you know they people have communicated well okay so we are not well aware of this all these viruses of this disease and this you know and uh, uh, you know threats and the dangers so it is a good point right so some people have you know communicated these things these issues to the common public so to the society so it was there from our department from our department of physiology that's why i highlighted someone i have uh, shared it a few days back and i just attempt uh, to uh, have these things done so you know that uh, i see that uh, there is uh, our one uh, famous uh, teacher uh, dr devojyoti dash and uma shankar sarkar and many uh, you know esteemed uh, scientist uh, so they are no more here uh, porimol vikashen pinaki ranjan chattopadhyay uh, ajit kumar maithi ashish sinha uh, ajit kumar dev sushil ranjan maitro they are one uh, you know they are pioneering scientist from the department of physiology and uh, so they created so please be with some kind of creativity in this uh, pandemic online uh, classes period and don't never ever feel uh, feel you know uh, negativity in yourself okay so there are a lot of things to do so that's why if you have some skill of you know soft skill if you have uh, some uh, you know uh, say fine print or some kind of communication skill like uh, you can uh, so you can say very well in front of the uh, verbal skill oral skill so okay so even if you recite well so then you just design some uh, you know program or something on the on the scientific uh, programs itself okay and if you write well or even even though you not you can write well okay you be editor you just uh, kind of uh, have some leadership to you know uh, be with the team of the you know editors okay so th this is also very important so three things are very important as i mentioned there is the determination motivation and judgment okay so so with that so though i cannot guarantee a nobel prize from my subject for myself even and also not for you but always i should you can uh, i i would like you to dream for it okay and go through the facts of the nobel prize okay so because this is one of the award winning uh, you know discipline that you have entered into so that's why i uh, always urge you to go through this you know website of the nobelprize.org and the prizes facts uh, on the nobel prize in the physiology in the medicine so then you will be you will be feel proud of this uh, of your discipline okay so you can do something so that's why i am telling you all these things and then take home message is that determination dream dedication and always remain positive clarity of thought and your goal and perseverance okay and okay so now it is time for acknowledging uh, acknowledgement so this is uh, i must acknowledge my i may i must pay my uh, highest regards to all my teachers for whom uh, i am uh, actually teaching and i am speaking before you and i always acknowledge my university administration for giving me all these opportunities and all and then i should uh, thank uh, dr indunil kaur uh, principal of surendranath college and uh, and all the faculty members of the department of physiology for giving me this opportunity and for extending uh, this uh, wonderful opportunity to in front of you okay thank you very much perhaps i have taken uh, a little bit more time so i excuse me for uh, this uh, more time thank you very much if you have any question i i would be happy to uh, share i happy to answer it uh, later thank you professor dev for such an illuminative speech uh, students you can put your question uh, to professor dev in chat box in zoom and also in youtube we have a question and answer session after completion of the second talk uh, our next speaker is dr proshun priyo nayak professor department of physiology all india institute of medical sciences jodhpur rajasthan professor nayak did his masters and phd in physiology from calcutta university as a recognition of his scientific contribution he crowned many awards from various national and international bodies before joining with the aims jodhpur uh, as a faculty of physiology professor nayak sab sikkim monipal institute of medical sciences bgc trust medical college bangladesh and nri medical college and general hospital guntur andhra pradesh his research works were published in more than 46 national and international peer reviewed journals with high impact factor Professor Nayak is a life member of various national and international academic bodies and editorial boards of many journals. With his vast experience, Professor Nayak is keenly interested 
to share his views for the uh, possible opportunities that the students of physiology and other biological sciences can avail after their UG, PG, and research courses. So without much delay, I would uh, like to request Professor Nayak to deliver his speech. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Bernali. Thank you very much uh, for such an introduction. And at the same time, I convey my deepest acknowledgement and gratitude for uh, arranging this, this one, this webinar, and giving me this opportunity to share my experiences with all who are present here. So I'm going to talk about this uh, continuation away from physiology after doing physiology. As uh, in continuation to Dr. Day's uh, lecture, it was so nice lecture actually, he uh, uh, created the platform very good for me to communicate to you all. And uh, the physiology is a really nice subject and uh, it's an uh, enjoyable subject. And you know, physiology is one of the biology subjects which is given award as the highest award, highest research award. Nobel Prize is given on physiology or medicine. The subject physiology is vast, very vast, and it is so wide that it can give rise to other subjects in medicine, like biochemistry, like pharmacology, and a little bit of away from physiology is pathology. Before I start my presentation, I would like to mention that this I am not promoting any course on behalf of any organization, not recommending any specific course for any individual. Sometimes in my presentation, the course name may match with other uh, university or other institute courses in part or in full, but that's a mere coincidence. This presentation is only for general information. I am not guaranteeing any of the provided information in terms of eligibility criteria, course duration, registration, as well as prospects of the course taker. Those who will use this information must verify the authenticity of the institution and satisfy themselves about the suitability of the course in all aspects before taking the course. With this disclaimer, I come to the basic. All of us, we started our uh, specialization to some extent, like till 10th standard, we were, uh, we are given with all the subjects. But after 10th standard, when we are choosing our subjects like biology, we started specializing. Then we go for further specialization and specialization and specialization. This is the general course of science with which course of academic line normally we try to follow. Those who are uh, attending this seminar, this webinar, they are physiology students, I believe, and uh, maybe they are physiology owners or physiology past course. 
maybe few of them are having chemistry botany or geology along with them, along with the physiology and maybe some other subjects is in uh, some may be having microbiology some may be having computer science uh, now with the uh, opening up of semester system and open credit system that uh, we can choose many alternative subjects along with physiology and that actually opened up the arena vast arena of physiologists to go into many many fields commonly we feel like after bsc physiology oh, what what after msc like okay nothing is there like, okay let me do msc theek theek hai msc kar msc to ho gaya bas chalo bhai phd ko kare ni PhD kore niye tar pore tar pore ki kotha kibhabe ki confusion and so they has mentioned that we should have a determination we should have a plan and in this respect prana uh, college department of physiology and iqac has taken a really more very important step that they are allowing the students with the thoughts with the courses opportunities like what and how you can mold your future starting from now like from physiology now not only this part we have so many other opportunities so that you can do better msc you can do better phd and effectively you can have a better future so this seminar will guide you this uh, pathway will guide you that how you can mold your future at the same time not only after bsc even up during msc or during phd you can have some additional qualification as professor deh has mentioned those qualification additional qualification will let you go into not only remove your confusion they will that will help you to plan your future before i suggest uh, something like as you know i am from uh, medical institute i did my msc psc physiology then msc physiology in phd in physiology from science faculty and then i did i joined medical institute where i i have again trained myself with msc in medical physiology and again did my phd in medical physiology now i am i could reach a premier institute with as a faculty as a professor there this is not only one example i am just giving you the a case study of our class 1991 batch where we could, we could see a number of students number of physiologists all of us physiologists and then we started moving and in several directions from university physiology post university professor then we have uh, research institute director deputy director level then we have uh, university team then we have foreign medical school teacher school professor we have foreign health administrator so many options are there we have school teachers 
headmasters we have entrepreneurs we have research or you can say clinical instrument support or clinical service support this way we as you can see it's not a single single pathway we have many alternatives many many pathways are moving around from one physiology point and these pathways were not so easy each pathway it took us all of us a the determination the perseverance as professor day has mentioned but during the process we all of us we have to have acquire some additional qualification additional degree as i have mentioned already professor day has already told you the research opportunity and the science faculty opportunity i am going to highlight mainly the other side that's why i kept the topic title as apart from physiology basic science physiology what else we could do from physiology on the medical and allied health science we can have the we can go for msc anatomy we can go for msc in biochemistry i am talking all these msc in medical medical msc already uh, professor day has mentioned about the uh, general science uh, msc medical msc in bio microbiology medical msc in pharmacology we can go for medical msc in forensic science we can go for medical msc in immunology or sometimes it is called clinical immunology depending on the institute we can go for clinical psychology we can go for clinical nutrition all these are medical and allied allied health science however i would like to put a caution here a note of caution here with the advent of national medical council nmc which is governing the medical college administration medical college syllabus medical college administration we have very few scopes available in medical colleges now it so this core this pathway is no more lucrative however this those who who has some clinical inclination or clinical attachment those who want to pursue their research career in medical courses in medical or clinical field they can opt these pathways so these are all medical and allied health science subjects that we can do medical msc med in anatomy biochemistry microbiology pharmacology forensic science however forensic science it has another general uh, subject apart from medical other many universities they provide forensic science and it can separately it can bifurcate into many similarly microbiology it can bifurcate biochemistry it can bifurcate into many other opportunities pharmacology it can bifurcate into many other opportunities so immunology also is useful and it is it can give us many opportunities clinical psychology can lead to practitioner clinical nutrition can lead to practitioner after internship in hospital setup so this medical and allied health faculty training or msc they are still good but not a cakewalk 
they take us they ask you to get trained yourself apart from physiology the basic courses like anatomy and biochemistry in with along with medical students in the bs first year or uh, bds first year student you need to do those things and then only you can pursue the three year course many places it's a three year course very few places it is only two years and even some places it is three years plus half half an hour three and half year uh, year course so these things they can give you some opportunity apart from medical college but if you think only for medical college lecturership this these courses are no more good apart from these msc there are some courses with post msc like you can go for master in physical education you can go for diploma in radiological physics these are post msc course you can go for clinical epidemiology mphil course after msc you can go for early intervention and developmental disorders mphil course you can go for msc medical lab technology specialization in pathology biochemistry microbiology so that you will be the trained scientist or technician for the particular type of job so after msc these are also available these courses are available so this could be one specific pathway which will be related to medical and allied faculty health science faculty coming to the management faculty there uh, we can go for master of public health we can go for dietetics and community nutrition management we can go for master of hospital administration we can go for medical laboratory management we can go for trauma care management we can go for disaster management all these are basically the eligibility is undergraduate however the uh, these management courses they are highly competitive so many cases like master of public health or uh, you can go for master of hospital administration there you will be competing with your mbbs counterpart as well as you can you will be you need a master degree even though the eligibility is bsc because high competition this uh, there could be like uh, you can go for after master degree also you can go for these are uh, like trauma care management as well as disaster management there are also more persons will be there from uh, dental or nursing or uh, mbb even mbbs students are also competing so when you think of or going planning to go in this direction you have to keep yourself motivated such a level that not only the physiology you need to go into the applied aspects of physiology which is the clinical physiology the medical physiology applied part of the physiology subject then if you think of the engineering faculty designing is very important one designing however this is not easily got you need to have some inclination towards designing after msc or during msc like uh, some uh, ergonomic specials they can go into this or uh, you need to have some mathematics background you need some mathematics background or you need to have some computer training in uh, cad or you can you can you need to have some language learning then only you can compete for these courses there are engineering uh, based uh, like msc in biotechnology as well as msc in biomedical engineering these two are uh, good in sense they are uh, having good prospects in job opportunities like uh, companies particularly those companies who are 
research uh, product producing research products or the instrumentation they help they take up this uh, trained person so this will be helpful for having a better opportunity so this is how the these are the engineering however apart from this uh, uh, this there are opportunities in interdisciplinary like environmental science you can have uh, many institutes like in gwalior universities are there then you can have universities in uttarakhand you can have universities in bangalore uh, so then chennai you can have the environmental science course or you can take up the neuroscience scope in gwalior it is there or it is uh, there in uh, jaipur uh, there it is there then neuroscience in nimhans it is there so many institutes they have the neuroscience msc course those can be taken up molecular and human genetics can be seen in chennai is available then it is available in uh, ahmedabad it is available in uh, gwalior so these institutes are also good and uh, you can take up these uh, msc courses in molecular and human genetics medical biotechnology already i have mentioned in engineering course there is uh, like msc biotechnology however little specialized or little more oriented towards the uh, biotechnology related to medicine the this medical biotechnology course the msc course in medical biotechnology these are also available mostly in south and some uh, institutes in noida institutes in uh, gurgaon institutes in uh, northeastern these uh, there are some courses in medical biotechnology as you can understand and I'm, i'm deliberately i'm not mentioning the institutes name but if you give a search you can uh, easily find it the uh, course where it is available from there you can plan for these things medical nanobiotechnology is a uh, coming course and it can be taken up from chennai it can be taken up from uh, guwahati it is there then it can be taken up from uttarakhand these courses are available easily it means uh, not easily available there will be only limited uh, uh, seats like 10 or 8 seats only will be available then how out of that maybe 50% or 40% seats will be sponsored seats or reserved seats for the in service candidate so it's a, it gives a, it it needs a, a real dedication determination as professor day has mentioned to reach to these uh, courses and uh, but however the prospect looks good for these courses pc engineering and regenerative medicine you know it's a very uh, uh, prospective uh, very much uh, upcoming uh, particularly in health science it is going to be a, a path changer regenerative medicine and uh, even uh, for regenerative medicine very few areas are available still it's uh, very important and uh, uh, foreign um, abroad scopes to go abroad and get trained and then come back you can initiate your own clinic also uh, along with some doctor or you can be a assistant to some surgery surg surgical department or some uh, regenerative medicine department that gives a, a good scope then counseling psychology is a very old uh, scope course and it is a long lasting course but still running uh, however uh, people are not uh, uh, not going for it for much uh, because they mostly go for the psychology background however physiology students can also join uh, because uh, the eligibility criteria is like uh, in the uh, bsc with psychology in case you have a psychology subject you can go for it medical side medical psychology is the same way clinical embryology or uh, clinical endocrinology uh, these are also uh, limited scope but uh, lucrative scope as you can see it's uh, like uh, many in vitro labs are coming up there you can Uh, get uh, yourself placed as a clinical embryologist 
embryologist or clinical endocrinologist but uh, these are also uh, available but similarly it's a very limited seats and very limited areas only few universities one or two universities in india they are uh, giving these courses so you can uh, if you are uh, having a clinical orientation if you are ready to uh, take the risk on your future if you are okay with this then you can take up these courses occupational and environmental health uh, few only few sub few centers are there in india however these uh, these are uh, like uh, this can go into extension to a safety engineer even though it is uh, like people are uh, they look for the btech engineers for safety engineers in uh, factories or in companies however if with a occupational and environmental health master degree you can get involved in the in, in these process in these uh, co uh, future is uh, price quite good applied and regulatory toxicology it's a very very new one and uh, it's only one or two places in india it is there but in abroad it is quite common now or people are taking up along with the physician assistant this is also part of the clinical research that our toxicology and uh, how the toxicological things can be maintained controlled particularly those who are in uh, dietic uh, in food or in poultry science or dairy science if any issue is coming up even in uh, medicinal chemistry pharmacochemistry pharmacochemistry pharmacopolitical technology this is also these are there are some scope so you can think of then uh, a little away from these uh, courses it's a mind body and lifestyle science master degree in mind body and lifestyle science is also available it is a uh, yoga naturopathy uh, course type of thing that it's like unorthodox uh, course style which can be taken up and it can you can uh, you can establish your own clinic and you can think of serving serving human being speech and language pathology this is also part of the allied health science however uh, uh, audiology is uh, bsc in audiology or diploma in audiology is uh, required sometimes but on paper eligibility is bsc so during counseling if you can convince the uh, uh, interviewer you can have an opportunity speech and language pathology then applied molecular biology mostly the research oriented master degree courses these are interdisciplinary interdisciplinary courses available from physiology you can go into these master degree courses too coming to some courses which are uh, not so uh, prospective but easily you can have a job opportunity like certificate course in histology technique or certificate course in museum technique these courses are uh, can be easily taken up by anyone and uh, maybe even it can be an added advantage added course uh, so you can think of uh, so that it will be helpful for uh, getting jobs diploma courses are also available for medical lab technology ecg te as ecg technician radiation therapy technology ophthalmic technician cardio instrument technician forensic science diploma course these courses are uh, basically uh, both the certificate and uh, these are from 10 plus 2 so when you are with physiology bsc you are going for a master degree before that or in addition to uh, normal master degree that you can have a uh, certificate course or diploma course so that can will that can give you a clinical orientation or you can have a uh, uh, better opportunity later on or going for a master degree if you are having a clinical orientation you can think of these courses in addition there are ug programs bsc programs even though you have already completed your bsc in physiology you can think of so that you can go into master master degree medical master degrees or 
job opportunity wise these are very very good very good uh, medical imaging medical laboratory te- technology medical imaging technology radiation technology neurophysiology or neuro and even some places there is electrophysiology uh, if you see the, the uh, nature or uh, uh, job opportunities biotechnica then you can think you can find many places many opportunities for electrophysiology or neurophysiology neuroscience courses renal dialysis dialysis technology anesthesia technology sometimes anesthesia and operation theater both are together anesthesia and operation theater technology or operation theater technology separately respiration therapy technology with this uh, covid situation you can understand how important it was respiratory uh, therapy cardiac care or cardiovascular care technology use bsc course is available perfusion technology is there emergency medicine technology uc programs are available optometry forensic science uh, both uh, like diploma courses as well as uc uh, courses are available clinical genetics audiology and speech language what i have already mentioned and prosthetic and orthotic science technology these these uc programs are also available these uc programs may help you to get some age over others so that you can uh, get your uh, dream dream fulfilled as uh, uh, as you plan for your future so what i am trying to give you the uh, opportunities available it may not be in your uh, neighborhood you need to uh, look for uh, your opportunities for a little distance maybe distance education or maybe uh, sometimes you can think of okay six months i can be staying to get a course uh, to get certificate course or a diploma course so that way it can help you to uh, gain your uh, dream in animal care also there are some uh, animal husbandry or animal lab certificate course uh, skill development care management of laboratory animals and experimental techniques are available training courses on laboratory animal care breeding and management including animal handling and restraint common procedures of sampling and dosing course on care and management of laboratory animals including animal quality control program these courses are useful for uh, those who are uh, opting for like uh, research program clinical research program you know all the clinical research program it starts with a phase one clinical trials where the animal experiment is very very important and for that uh, these these certificate courses or training courses are very essential and uh, most of these are uh, by the veterinary institute veterinary universities or some like uh, national institute of nutrition national uh, center for uh, laboratory animal studies they for them you can from there you can get uh, yourself trained and these certificates these training gives you advantages over others and you can opt for these things so that you can get better opportunity finally if you are really explorative you want to uh, go out think out of the box and you want to uh, you are you, you are ready to uh, come out of your comfort zone you can think of pharmacovigilance it's a very important course it's a nice course and nowadays it's a very uh it's going gaining access to many places then clinical research then you can go think of data science you can think think of computational biology as well as you can think of scientific content writing these things are already uh, touched upon by professor day uh, so these these are uh, i'm just giving you the clue if you are explorative if you want to have a different uh, outlook uh, for your career you can think of this uh, at least nothing wrong in uh, looking at explore them let us see what are those things if you see those things then you can think if you may have an inclination for that so that you can uh, plan for this your future in these regards so coming back to my old uh, slide we have started with biology bsc done bsc physiology msc physiology as well as phd physiology this is the normal course and uh, this is what uh, most of us we are planning but 
if you think of you can have jobs at every places and sometimes even uh, you can with jobs you can do these things with jobs you can do these things so keep your eyes open try to interact with people there are opportunities not only physiology as general science being a physiologist you have the opportunity to get attached to the uh, allied health science directly this is uh, you are uh, like i feel those who are in physiology they are blessed that we have dual opportunity we can go for physiology as a science team we can go for physiology as a clinical as a medical subject as well as we have lot of things lot of opportunity in terms of allied health science so science health as well as allied health everywhere we can fit ourselves and i think we are good in doing that so i would I like to acknowledge dr kushal das dr swasit sau dr amitar virgaswami dr tiyotosh nath dr rina maiti and many others to contribute in this information what i have provided today i would like to thank uh, the organizer dr bernali dr sukti and uh, principal sir dr indranil kaur and also the iqsc program management thank you thank you everyone that's all from my side thank you uh, okay. dr nayak uh, i will request i would request shubha ji to please conduct the question and answer session Uh, there are many questions, Dr. Nayak and Dr. Shonjit De. Uh, so I will come to the questions. That the first and the primary thing that it has generated the, the huge prospects that you have uh, uh, talked about has generated a huge number of queries. First of all, uh, the queries to both of you are if you can if you could provide the uh, the accreditation part. This if you if 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 somebody goes to the management out in the that that who who how to decide about that uh, which in which universities they have to pick for which accredited universities they have to pick for their management if if they 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 want to go to medical uh, masters in public health or in uh, the nutritional management trauma care management. that which type of accreditations they will be uh, searching for while they enter those management degrees uh, this is the first question uh, i think that this is the most important part also because these are the all the private universities most of the private universities also offer these courses so maybe this is the part that the students can't decide on so if you can highlight on those areas yeah i think uh, i will take up this question i have this this is uh, related to allied health If if it is uh, like the university must be, uh, if it is you know in in India we have two types of universities. One university is like a general science university and another is health university. Some of if it is not health university, then if it is not given in its name as a health university, like there are universities uh, like. Uh, in dr ntr university of health science dr rajiv gandhi university uh, rajiv gandhi university of health science then many universities are there health health science universities those health universities must be accredited or following the norms of mnc national Med medical council those health universities if it is not health university then the uh, ugc should accredited those courses some courses are also accredited to uh, like diploma courses or some technical courses are also accredited to on um, aict so we should look forward look for the accreditation from ugc or nmc or the aict in addition some uh, paramedical courses like uh, it is in process maybe within few months it will come up that uh, all the paramedical courses will have a specific 
registration number a council on paramedical council is being prepared and we will be having a specific registration number for all the paramedics so you need to uh, look for the ugc or nnc or aict and once they go for this uh, uh, council paramedical council then whether it the college is accredited by the paramedical council or not i think that will uh, answer the question sir another thing is that there is a tremendous interest on uh, uh, this forensic science uh, anything related with forensic science there are many questions that have been put up here so and yeah. uh, another thing is that uh, the, the technology thing that in uh, that radiation uh, ophthalmic technician uh, then uh, optometry that part what what will be the accreditation process for those courses for those ophthalmic technicians for those optometricians okay uh, so first i will talk about the forensic science as i have mentioned during the talk that uh, forensic science we have two options one is uh, from the medical college forensic science msc medical forensic uh, medical msc in some forensic science for forensic science and another is simply msc in forensic science there are two uh, I, as far as i know two dedicated uni institute and university which are uh, running only on forensic science and criminology so those are really very good prospect in that and uh, accreditation is uh, obviously you, it need to be ugc if it is a general university it, it has to be accredited by the ugc the master degree must be accredited by the ugc if it is accredited uh, health science then it must be accredited by the health university but no, national medical council they won't accredit these uh, uh, these uh, msc courses and uh, coming to the other part what was the question in the uh, the management part sir the management okay. that you have talked to, told about the management the masters in public health management dietitian management uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah those, those things about this uh, technology like uh, radiation technology or ophthalmic uh, tech, ophthalmic technician or optometry these are conducted by recognized universities university accreditation is sufficient till now but as i have mentioned that uh, there is already uh, bill has been passed and it will be coming within few months that uh, the uh, all these paramedics these are all coming under paramedics all they all these paramedic courses they will be having a specific registration number and a registration like doctors or nurses they have registration similarly paramedics also they will be having a registration council with registration and those registration will be must for getting their jobs to be done however uh, if now most of these cases are uh, like uh, government jobs if you are like you know there is uh, all india institute of uh, medical sciences they have uh, these courses few places then uh, if you get a uh, master degree or a, even a certificate job done certificate course done from this premier institute then it is easy to get involved in those premier institutes itself because uh, most of cases it is run on the demand basis the seats are uh, prepared on the demand basis ki how many students we need how many posts we need uh, next few years accordingly those uh, question those uh, posts will be created similarly like uh, electrophysiology as well as uh, the ophthalmic technician they can get involved in uh, uh, eye hospitals or they can be associated with uh, eye surgeon ms claim uh, uh, this op uh, ophthalmologist they can be associated with ophthalmologist so that could be another option each one each courses they will be recognized only by the university currently and then uh, the opportunity is only associated with those uh, health setup health service setup thank you dr naik that will yes 
Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nayak. You have been quite extensive in your lecture, uh, in your in your uh, delivering of opportunities. It's a huge arena from physiology to other biological sciences, and uh, uh, with tremendous interest has been generated uh, for that. Uh, thank you. For, uh, there is a question for, to Dr. Shonjit Day that uh, with, with physiology what can be taken up for uh, what type of course uh, uh, examinations in government sector. Uh, this uh, there are there are optional subjects uh, where where physiology and WBCS uh, UPSC uh, services where physiology can be taken up. There is a question regarding that. Uh, can you please highlight on that, Dr. Shonjit? Uh, yeah, thank you for that and uh, for highlighting that question. Uh, first of all, uh, for the uh, as I mentioned, there is a physiology is a subject uh, in the West Bengal Public Service Commission. However, it is not uh, directly there uh, in the UPSC as uh, I'm not so familiar with that UPSC syllabi. And uh, but uh, so far I know there is no direct. Uh, uh, I think that is a life science or uh, I mean allied subject. Okay, so uh, it is uh, some sort of that, but directly there is no link with the physiology. But I think uh, one can get help of that uh, study, after studying physiology, they can, uh, I think uh, more than uh, 60 to maybe 70% uh, common from the physiology courses. I mean, uh, our BSc uh, uh, undergraduate courses is very vast, very versatile. So one can find, uh, you know, easily opt for, uh, you know, UPSC IAS exam taking that, taking uh, from the physiology. Dr. Day, there was another question uh, regarding uh, if somebody wants to take optional uh, physiology in the WBCS, so will it, uh, that be better for we're comparing to other subjects? Uh, his, uh, there was a question that will physiology be uh, like, a, is, a, is a better scope for them, uh, the, the, they who take physiology will, will be WB, in WBCS for cracking WBCS, will, be, will that be helpful? Okay, okay, that is a very interesting point. Uh, okay, so that depends on, you know, the person, uh, the person, I mean, uh, how far you are comfortable with. Okay, so that is main criteria. I, I mean, if someone is, uh, 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 he or she is, you know, uh, is better uh, prepared for, with physiology, so definitely uh, that candidate should opt for that uh, subject. Okay, so that depends on that, not on his choice, but on his uh, strength. So that, uh, that would be the main criteria, okay. And uh, uh, so if uh, someone is not so, you know, fond of uh, studying that other subjects like zoology and all these things, so why uh, that candidate should choose it? If he uh, is comfortable with that, then he can choose uh, the physiology. It is, I mean, it, uh, it is uh, actually immaterial to say that uh, this subject would be better to score or something like that. It is, uh, it cannot, uh, you know, delineate in that way. Dr. Day, there is another question that uh, after uh, pursuing through the BSc pass general courses and not having honors, if, if a candidate wants to uh, have a master degree, uh, then even, is, it, is it possible in West Bengal uh, to have a master degree after the uh, pass uh, a general graduate? I am not so sure about it uh, at this point because uh, I think there was a uh, you know, option for this, doing the special honors or something in the third year. So that without losing a year, so one could uh, opt for that, you know, uh, third year and could complete that BSc uh, course where as a special honors candidate. And, uh, uh, you know, after taking that pass course, then one can opt for that, you know, but he uh, or she has to do a you know, good result in a pass course subject. I think uh, there was a cut of marks or something like that, but I am not so sure about it uh, these days. Because you know that with that CBCS pattern and all these things, I think this uh, criteria has gone. I think the general thing, I, I'm not so sure about it, but uh, I don't think that this is now possible. Maybe, maybe I, will, I will intervene in this. Yes, please. Um, I think you, you, uh, one can opt for the, some kind of diploma or something. Uh, with no, no, the... not only diploma. They, if someone is really interested in medical, uh, means, uh, MSc, uh, then he, he or she can go for this uh, medical physiology courses right. where we don't need honors as a physiology as a subject is sufficient. Even yes. if, uh, without physiology also, like physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, microbiology, these subjects can be taken up with BSc degree itself. That would be a great opportunity. 
that is really get that will be a, getting a master degree it will be easier for them exactly exactly dr naik you have mentioned about ug programs after bsc uh, so those are those ug programs after 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 a graduation in calcutt university a general graduate in uh, calcutt university a past course graduate in calcutt university can they go to those ug programs in medical imaging renal dialysis anesthesia electrophysiology yes, 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 yes. optometry perfusion technology prosthetics or all those arena that you have mentioned exactly exactly that's that's why i have mentioned somebody may be like uh, because of some limitation you couldn't go into honors or couldn't go into the um, master degree they can opt for this alternative route they can go for this ug program and it, it will be like applied course for them and uh, it will be allied health science and from there from that graduation he or she can go for master degree again Again, they again, choose for it. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Doctor Nag. Again, there is there is another there is another opportunity that you have mentioned about special soft skill development in veterinary institutes, in animal care, in uh, sampling, dosing, uh, breeding of animals, uh, breeding of animal handling. Uh, are these yes, courses yes. a little bit uh, cost effective? Means uh, poor section of people uh, can be uh, for the for they who are developing entrepreneurship, like in animal husbandry, poultry. those type of things uh, the big because in shurandanath college we face a lot of persons uh, come for a, a, and join our college who are, don't have that sound of uh, economic background so that's I, a very important question for us i agree actually actually these courses are uh, not so costly and many course many of these courses are uh, means like certificate courses are stand uh, starting from four weeks to three months so it's uh, these are uh, like uh, not so costly uh, uh, not not free also but not so costly that's also true and then dr nag please can you mention about the accreditation process in the veterinary universities uh, how do they check the vet veterinary institutes whether they are accredited or not and which veterinary institutes rely on for that accredit accreditation process no no uh, the, 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 these certificates are not possible, not acceptable from any places like only few places are there like in chennai there is tanubhas uh, veterinary university they provide this uh, this another thing is like uh, as i have mentioned during hyderabad n class is there that uh, nclas the national uh, center for laboratory animal studies then uh, in farid uh, uh, vallabhpur vallabhgarh faridpur haryana it is uh, there is uh, uh, national institute of animal welfare in iaw this three four uh, then another is there izzat nagar izzat nagar up there is there is courses so only few course few areas these courses are uh, offered and uh, they it is uh, like almost round the year going on and those all of these are like uh, good uh, these are authentic only and uh, like one need to open their eyes that's it you know nowadays uh, many uh, thought things are happening i agree but you need one need to just keep their eyes open so oh, common sense so that they can go for this uh, particular type of uh, institute only and only accredited institute only okay i just want to uh, ask one point uh, with regard to that so one yeah. uh, has to have that uh, bsc degree that means bsc general degree uh, to opt for this courses this diploma or the certificate courses or they can directly come up uh, from the hs after passing the hs do you have any idea yeah yes yes even even the some certificate courses or diploma courses they are eligibility is like uh, 10 plus 2 but yes. uh, if you see the job opportunity uh, most is like uh, after doing these courses i am expecting that one should go for a like uh, government jobs government hospitals or government institute or health institute medical college institute set up there it will be easier better if someone is with uh, graduation degree and their learning also will be more uh, like comfortable they can uh, uh, easily they can fit with the different these short courses are only very, like very fast courses these courses are not so easy to complete so with uh, learning with bsc it is easier that is my personal experience 
but eligibility wise many of the certificate and uh, graduation courses are uh, like i mean certificate and diploma courses eligibility wise it's 10 plus 2 only okay dr nayak and uh, the, the, the last question is from me <laughs> if you can answer me yeah, that, uh, yeah the the question is uh, the nmc is not allowing any uh, any 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 master degree holders in medical uh, physiology uh, to get uh, yes. uh, uh, the, the, to get uh, entry to take entry entry as a teacher uh, in the in the faculty of medical colleges in yes. the faculty faculty of medical colleges then uh, then there are the, then they are also offering these courses anatomy biochemistry microbiology pharmacology nutrition for clinical nutrition psychology so are these for private practicing are these or courses no. for private practicing or or no. this is for the uh, for the uh, private medical colleges or private uh, uh, hospitals to take uh, are the uh, uh, what are these courses for yes yes i understand this 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 is a this is a good question and uh, actually many places uh, they are stopping the courses like uh, uh, the, i can tell you dr ntr university of health science vijayawada andhra they have stopped the msc courses but uh, this is i take it in other way that uh, this is one option is like uh, after doing msc one option is faculty of medicine college medical colleges but like what we do in med, uh, general science physiology stream that opportunity is never lost for us we have that same opportunity to have to compete with the life science specialist but even with uh, with this we have a better opportunity as a clinical courses clinical uh, phd or clinical opportunities to have the research program is clinical based there we can be a better physiologist there better fit Mm, uh, thank you. The, 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 uh, this almost completes all the questions uh, actually the, that are, that have been posted here. I just helped you to uh, gather them and uh, yeah. uh, ask thank you, ask thank you, you all those. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And uh, over to you, Bonna Levi. Thank you, Shubhraji. Uh, now we come to the last session of our today's webinar. in this session we are going to experience a very useful and interesting topic on soft skill development soft skills are personal attributes that influences how well we can work or interact with others especially for the students development of such skills are extremely important as in present turmoil situations they have to cope up with the frustrations challenges and need the ability to handle the competitive environment in a better way understanding the importance of such department of physiology shrinivas college requested dr shanali dasgupta an eminent soft skill trainer as well as image and potential management coach to share her expertise with our students in a bit dr shanali did his masters in physiology from calcutta university and phd in pharmaceutical technology from jadavpur university she was a post doctoral csir research fellow in indian institute of chemical biology iscb kolkata she is a certified soft skill trainer from the reputed image consulting business institute in mumbai as a physiologist dr shanali successfully brings additional deep knowledge to her work she is presently based on singapore with her clients worldwide the professionally strongly believe that body today everyone needs to be globally ready as per clients personality and global aspirations for their professional social and personal success i'd like to invite dr shanali dasgupta to train us about soft skill management madam the platform is yours now Thank you so much Bonnelli for your kind introduction and hope all of you can see me and can hear me can you give me a nod yes madam it's perfect thank you and uh, so i welcome to all of you to 
my program on soft skills and image building, but before moving ahead, first I need to thank Warner Lee and Dr. Shukti Chakravarti, head of the Department of Physiology, Shurendranath College, for inviting me here. I also want to thank Dr. Indranil Kaur, the principal of the college, for having me on his esteemed platform. Many of you don't know, I have a connection with Shurendranath College. This is the college for my sir. And I'm really emotional right now as Dr. Modhushudan Ghoshal was my sir, and he is the person who instilled the love of physiology in me. So I'm missing him and he would have been proud to see me today on this platform. I requested Bornali to invite Jhornadi, Mrs. Modhushudan Ghoshal, uh, to be here. I don't know whether she is there or not. If you are here, Jhornadi, I will be in touch with you. So a very good evening to all of you who have joined us tonight, um, all the students, the respected teaching faculty, non-teaching staff from physiology, other departments, and of course, uh, Principal Sir, who is with us tonight, and my fellow speakers who spoke fabulously about the scopes of physiology, uh, Dr. Day and Dr. Nai. So good evening to all of you from uh, it's good morning here. I'm in New York City and I am in front of you today. And really, I'm so honored and privileged. So Dr. Day and Dr. Naik has told you, the students who are there, the research scholars who are going to get into the professional world very soon, and students, you are also going to get there soon. So they have told you about the scopes of physiology within the physiology domain or outside uh, the physiology field. There are allied sciences where you can have scopes. I am going to bring something else on the table. I am going to talk to you about the soft skills you need for to enable yourself to enhance your employability and to create a brand for yourself. So what is soft skills? First, for that, let's find out what are hard skills. Hard skills are what the students you are doing right now. Hard skills are your degrees, your certificates, your computer skills, your other abilities in the allied subject. These are your hard skills. But Harvard University has shown us that 85% of the skill which we use in our professional life and in our personal and social life are not our hard skills, it is our soft skills. Now the point is, what are soft skills? Soft skills are our interpersonal skills, are our problem solving skill, negotiation skill, decision making skill, our communication skill, our emotional intelligence, how intelligently we can control our emotions, our empathy, all these things are coming into the soft skills, even your goal setting skills. Now we talk about dreaming. And when I, even I say dream big, dream big, but when you dream, you don't sleep. Your dream will not let you sleep. And for dreaming, you have to, you can't just dream and dream. You have to do certain goal settings, start with small goals. And this is a good, elements which I'm going to share with you today, which you can apply on yourself and you see how your world is going to change. Although I'm talking to students, but there are many professionals which are, who are here with us tonight. So it is actually applicable to us all. It is irrespective of our age, of our gender, of our educational qualification, our financial qualification, our social status, Nothing matters, we all can apply them and we can be a better person than what we were yesterday. So let me just get into the, my slides, which please tell me whether you can share, you can see them. Oh, now I have to find my slides. This is the one which I want to share. Now, can you see yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So let me just make it full screen. 
So this is a PPT which I have made specifically for uh, today for the students of Shurendranath College and whoever has joined us tonight. And I also want to welcome and thank uh, many of my friends and family who have joined us tonight, whom I have sent uh, the flyer which I have got from the college. So thank you, all of you. And I want to now take you to this mesmerizing, fascinating world of soft skills and image building. As Bornelli has rightly said, that I'm a certified soft skill trainer, I'm a certified image consultant. So I have learned image management. Image management is managing your impression, managing your image. So what I have done, I have integrated both the course together and I have actually made my own curriculum, which I offer to my clients. This is my profession, what I do. And I have a background in physiology. So do I apply my physiology knowledge now? Yes, I do. I do it when I take my emotional regulations class, I explain to my clients that how the bodily emotions happen, the emotions showing in the body, and then I bring my physiology knowledge into this. Now, anything I'm going to tell you, nothing will fall into place until and unless we have the right frame of mind. Right now, all of you are there. But I don't want you be, to be like that, but we see these kind of people amongst us, around us. Some of us, maybe, maybe we are prisoners. We are prisoners means we are prisoned in our own thoughts. But when you are here, when you are here, you are here to learn something. So I hope there is no prisoner in my audience. Prisoners don't want to learn anything. Prisoners say, these are the typical lines of the prisoners. You check if you are one or not. They say, we have learned enough. We have done enough. We are doing our job. We really don't need to know anything or we are in the right age. Probably if we were young, we would have learned it. Prisoners have many crutches and they say these kind of sentences. Please don't be a prisoner. Open your mind and you try to soak what are given to you. You may not keep it, but just go through it and see if it is, if you can apply it in your own life. So when I'm talking about the prisoners, I'm talking about a prisoner mindset, which is actually are called fixed mindset. I'm sure you will have fixed mindset people within your uh, friends, family, and other acquaintances. Then there is an opposite mindset, which is called growth mindset. Growth mindset people are like sponge. You put them into the water. If the water is the vast knowledge, they will soak there, they will take all the water. Will they retain it? Can we retain all the knowledge what we are given to? No, we can't. So possibly we can't. So they squeeze the water out but they keep what they want to keep. That is the spawn. So I want all of you, whether the students or whoever has joined me tonight to be like a sponge, to be like a growth mind, in the growth mindset, that is the right mind frame. With that, we can proceed. If we don't have that, nothing will fall into years and nothing you will try in your life. But as an image consultant, as a soft skill trainer, I urge you, Whatever I'm going to share with you tonight, you please apply it on yourself. Now, what is image? I'm talking about image. Now, image is nothing but you in the other people's mind and eyes. So right now, sitting here, I am creating an image in your mind. You are having an impression about me right now. So image is, suppose you are in a big meeting room and you have been told to speak for two, uh, two minutes, five minutes, you speak and then you leave the room. Rest of the members in the room, the way you are here right now and I'm speaking. Now if I leave and if somebody comes and asks you, what do you think about that lady? What do you think about Swarnali? you tell it in two, three words, 
whatever the words you say, that is my image is creating in your mind. So this is the perception. Now, every one of us who are speaking or not speaking, we are creating a perception amongst our friends and our, amongst our teachers within ourselves. So, but what is your image within to you? Is there always people will think me that what I am and why it is important? Because important, it is important because your bosses need to have a good impression about you. Your colleagues have to have a good impression about you. And that's why it is important for your own growth. But what about my impression about myself? So that I'm, com that I'm coming into that, but I want to bring another word here. It's called first impression. I'm sure you all have heard this word called first phrase called first impression. And we say that you never get a second chance to create a first impression. You know where first impression is created? Everywhere, when you're coming to the college, you're meeting the first time your friends, your teachers are seeing you for the first time, you're going for an interview, you're creating an impression uh, on the interview, uh, the people who are going to take your interview, the interviewers, you're creating an impression when you're going for a job. Everywhere we are creating an impression. Can we repeat that impression again? We possibly can't. If I really can't make a positive impression right now, and if I tell, oh, Dr. Chakraborty, give me another chance, I really goofed up in the last one, now I'm going to be prepared. People don't have time. People will, everybody is busy. If you get five minutes in life, in your interview, wherever you are going, for the scopes which Dr. Naik and Dr. They told you, for that, you really need to make yourself stronger. And right now, after my talk, whatever I'm going to tell you, please practice to make yourself more strong and make your brand. See, we all are individual people. There are thousands of people who are doing physiology honors and MSc, not in India, in other places of the world. Why somebody will give you a chance? What else you can bring on the table? So you can bring all these things, what I'm going to tell you. And these are, I possibly can't tell you everything because our time is pressed. And this is also not my session, but this here I am to give you a guideline. So I will tell that you start with three things. Three things, your A, your B, and your C. And what is your ABC? Your A is your appearance. How you appear? What are the clothes you are wearing? What are the accessories you are wearing? Accessories means your jewelry, your wristwatch, your glasses, everything, your tie, your pocket square, your pen. What are you are using? What are the bags, your shoes? Do you think it doesn't matter? There are research works which has been done that appearance matters. And it has direct connection with your confidence, with your self-esteem. So appear positively and appropriately. Now I will talk about it later. Number two, B is your behavior and body language. So body language is that language in which our body talks. What happens when you enter into that interview door? What happens when you try to go to a principal's office or a vice chancellor's office, or probably you are working in the organization, you go to the CEO's office. What happens? You stand there. Suppose now, if I don't talk to you, still my body is talking to you. Are you only listening to me? No, you are also looking at me. And the same way this transaction happens when you are in this chair talking to others, they are not only listening to you, they are also seeing something about you and that is what your body language is. Suppose you are going to an ATM in the night, nobody is there. What do you do before keying in, keying in your numbers? You just probably just look like this. You have not talked to anybody, but have you sent a message by doing this? Yes, you have. You are checking threats around you. You are checking, oh, nobody is seeing me. 
So this is what body language is all about, which we will discuss more. Last is C is your communication. Communication is very important. Actually, these three things are important. I will talk about communication later. Here we call communication where I'm using words and I'm communicating. Body language is nonverbal. Communication is verbal. So we, when we communicate, we communicate with non-verbally and verbally and visually is our appearance. So all these three kinds of communications is coming from the people who are opposite to us or going from my side to you. And then an image and perception is being built. Who can control it? Who can control this ABC? If it is my ABC, I can control it. If it is your ABC, you have to control it. Now I am coming to the image. What you have, your image, your self-portrait. What do you think about yourself? Suppose sitting there, you might think that I'm very knowledgeable. You might think I'm very smart. You might think I'm very beautiful. You might think thousand things about me, all the good things. But do I think that? How many times it has happened that you think, oh, no, no, I'm not good enough. You're beautiful. No, no, I'm not beautiful. No, no, I don't have any abilities. No, no, these are our self-talks. Mark this word, negative self-talk. We all have them. Less you have them, more you will be out there and successful. So try to control your negative self-talk, how you can do that. You can do that by understanding that all of us are worthy. I will repeat that quote of Einstein, probably not the same words that where he said that everybody is a genius. Only if you judge a fish, by its ability to climb a tree, that fish whole life, it will think that it is stupid, it is an idiot. So you have to understand what are your qualities. You have to understand what are your strengths and then strengthen them more. If you have some work upon, you work on that. Would you believe if I tell you that I used to dread giving a public talk? I thought I won't be able to ever come on stage and talk in front of people. But how I have overcome my own fear. So fear will come, confusion will come. You have to really sit and sort it out and find out what are your strengths. So I know you have your strengths, your PhD, your MSc, your BSc, your education. What else? What about these soft skills? and image building I'm talking about. What about your A, B, C? So please work on your A, B, and C because these A, B, Cs will help you to understand yourself, understand your self-worth. Self-worth has a direct connection with self-esteem. Self-esteem is not ego. Self-esteem is self-pride. You know you are worthy. You know there are so many things you can't but there are so many things you can. Now, whoever has come from the background which is not financially strong, background, the house, the upbringing which are not so strong in your head, you give me 10 reasons that, oh, I can't do it because of these, these, these things. I'll give you 20 reasons that why you can't, can't do it. You are privileged. Privileged, you are in a college. There are a thousand others who can't come to the college. Here, I want to say another thing that you be confident. If I tell you to be confident, you won't be able to be confident. You have to be confident and you will be confident only if you understand your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem will increase and self-esteem will help to build your self-confidence. So that's why I say that simple is not simple. Sometimes we can't look at people's eyes. Sometimes we can't stand in front of somebody. We feel shy, we feel fearful, but you have to understand maybe your professor is there, but they are in their age, they have become the professor. You are still a student. 
you have, but you have to prepare yourself. You have to make yourself strong. Be strong like your roots has to be very strong, like a big tree. Storms will come. Some storms come to wash your, clear your path so you see better. Some storms come to teach you about not so good things about life, but makes you stronger at the end. So this is what you need to do. Now I'm coming to my favorite topic. Do you know your clothes and messages? This is very interesting. And you know, there are lots of research work has been done on all these things. Whatever I'm going to tell you, you all big universities like Stanford University, University of California, Los Angeles campus, other campuses, Harvard Business School, Harvard University is a pioneer in this kind of research. Carnegie Mellon University, Cambridge University, they all do, and some uh, companies like Procter & Gamble, and they also fund these kind of researches. And research has found that your clothes speak. They do, if you are in a suit, business suit, or if you are in a jacket, you look more formal you look more authoritative if you just take it out. And if you are in a shirt, you roll your shirt, you look more casual. So whatever you are doing with your clothes, you are sending a message. Problem is some of us, because we have not been told all these things, we have not been taught all these things we don't know. All of us are wearing clothes, but purchasing or getting the right one is very important because unknowingly, you are sending some messages through them. So I say you understand that message, which I will try to tell you, and then use your clothes like a resource. You have your intelligence, you have your education, you have your money. Do you use it as a resource? Similarly, use your clothes in your favor. You understand when you have to wear what kind of clothes and you can create that message. You want to look powerful, there are clothes for it. You want to look friendly, there are clothes for it. So there are some elements which you need to understand and we are going to, I'm going to uh, tell you here. Uh, now, next slide, let me come to the next slide. So when you are choosing your clothes, you have to understand four A's of personal appearance your clothes and your appearance, overall appearance. Appearance is not only clothes, appearance is your grooming. Appearance is your, the accessories, as I said, what you're wearing. It is extremely important because these are sending messages and these are building your brands. Because if you come to the college with just, you know, wearing something with a messy hair, what you are doing? or you go to an interview like that, or you go to meet your bosses like that, or in your professional work uh, colleagues like that, what you are doing, you are creating an obstacle between you and your dreams, between you and your goal. So we don't want any obstacle. We just want growth for all of us. We want to move forward and upward. So for that, what you need to do, you need to focus on your ABC. I'm harping on this ABC. I'm talking about A here. Appropriateness of clothing means that you be appropriate to the occasion, appropriate to the situation. When you're coming to college, your clothing will be something. When you're going for a social event, you can change it and you have to change it. Next is your authenticity. You be authentic. Now, we have uh, many men joined us today. I can ask one question and I can divide all the men into two. I can ask who likes to wear pink shirt? Some will say I like to wear, some will say I will never wear a pink shirt. So this is their authenticity. You be who you are. You don't want to portray who you are not. You really don't have to change your voice, change your things for others. Do it for yourself you make yourself strong and see how others will change accordingly. So authenticity is very important. Of course, you can take inspirations from other people. We 
all take inspiration from others, but you have to understand your physical appearance, your structure is yours. Your physical appearance, your age is in who you are. And you don't compare with no one, not even with your friends. Each to its own, you have to understand that. Now, authenticity is hugely important because many of you know my husband, Shushabhan, is also a student of physiology and have uh, done his master's from here and uh, now working in the corporates. Through him, I have met many corporate leaders and few I have asked that what is that single quality you need to see within your employers? And they said authenticity. So you don't have to pose and portray what you are not. You are very good. You are doing good. Only thing you work on your ABC and strengthen yourself from inside. Next is attractiveness. This is my favorite. Attractiveness. Now, how? who said to be attractive? Nobody. Nobody has told us ever. Sometimes it has shown that if somebody is attractive, he or she will be seen as that person has no brains. So the brain and attractiveness doesn't go together. No, it is not the case. Attractiveness, there are research which has been done on this, which is very important research. And you know what they have found? Attractive people get 15% more salary than their non-attractive counterpart. Isn't it very amazing? So attractiveness, again, I'm bringing that thing. I'm not talking here about what is your height, what is your skin tone, whether your nose is sharp, whether your eyes are big, how much good, lovely hair you have. No, I'm not talking about that. Please don't get me wrong. I am saying what you have, make it work for you. You understand how to make yourself more attractive so people will understand this person who is appropriately dressed, authentic from inside out, and attractive, you see you will be a people's person. And only with appearance, no, then all the models, you know, who are work, walking on the ramp, they would have become the best people to be attracted to. Physical attractiveness is important, but your mental attractiveness will keep you going. Will keep you going, and I'm coming to that also. Now, affordability. Now, you might think, oh, she's an image consultant, now she, if I can, if I go to her, she might tell me that you buy thousand clothes. No, I will not tell you. Whatever you have, we all image consultants are trained, trained to tell our clients that if you have five pieces of clothing, if you have two shirts and two trousers and one jacket, we can create many more different looks for you with that. So you don't go and run to the shop. Nothing is going to happen for you. And it doesn't matter where from you shop. It doesn't matter you go to the roadside or big bazaar, you can buy 2,000 rupees, 200 rupees, 1,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees, lakhs also. People buy for a bag for five lakhs. That is also good for them. But will that change their image? No, it will not. You really have to follow these four A's. And this is very important and in appropriateness, I want to give this example of uh, Facebook CEO, um, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, we all know that he's always in a gray t-shirt and blue denim. But this Mark Zuckerberg, when he came to India and met PM Modi a few years back, he came in a suit. A billionaire who is running the Facebook show and he, why he has to change his attire? Because India is the highest grosser for Facebook. He cannot really, you know, meet the Indian uh, people. He has come in his formal suit when he came to meet Indian PM, but he doesn't do that all the time wherever he goes. So this is the appropriateness I want to tell you. I'm not talking about wearing, telling you to wear suit. I'm saying you be appropriately dressed wherever you are going according to that. Now, what is appropriately dressed? That I'm going to show you soon. Now, we all more or less know that this is our, this is we wear uh, in the professional attire and this is we avoid wearing in the professional, um, 
you know, kind of uh, situation. And we all know that although this boy here with the round neck t-shirt and denim, many of you come to the college like that and that is absolutely all right. But if you are in the work situation, I have written workplace. Work situation, you don't wear round neck t-shirt ever. Wear a collar, wear a collared shirt, collared t-shirt if you don't want to don't want to wear a shirt because you are coming on a Saturday, you wear a t-shirt, but wear a collar. Collar actually sends the message it is formal. So on the left-hand side, I have shown some photos, which all of you know. You might say, what is a big deal? We all know this. But I'm going to tell you to notice few things here and on this side. Here on the left side, professional attire, look at the colors. Colors are more sober colors. Now, what is sober color? There is nothing called sober color. What is sober to you might not sober to me. What is sober to me might not sober to you. See? So it is very relative. Now, there are certain colors, black, white, and gray. Gray, not brown, not ash, gray. Gray, black, and white are three standard, quintessential neutral colors. That doesn't mean that there are not other neutral colors. There are other neutral colors like navy blue, like burgundy, like plum, like maroon, and some dark greens. They are also neutral colors, also brown, beige, they are neutral colors. So you wear neutral color clothes mostly in your professional attire. And please remember one thing, physics law, white is the color which reflects all the light. So when somebody wears white, the object looks bigger. If you wear black, you look more slimmer. So this is just an observation. I'm not, this is not my color class, but I want to, I, I, take, I used to take color class for my institute. I was a faculty there and my color class used to last for eight hours. So there were from physics to physiology to application of color, psychology of color, what color means. More darker color means more formal. So there are many things into it. So I am telling you in your attire, in your clothes, you open the wardrobe and then please remember all these words. What is the color? What is the cut and style of your clothing? And what is the fabric of your clothing? All these things you remember and then you choose your professional attire. Fabric has to be middleweight and not flimsy or transparent. You cannot wear sleeveless, especially ladies, because that is not formal. More you are covering your body, more it is formal. So a man's suit is most formal. But because of our tropical country and we don't need to wear a suit all the time, but when you are going for a meeting, you are speaking, you are going for a conference, please consider adding a jacket on top of this, if not suit. Right now I'm wearing a jacket. It is not matching with my pant. In suit, the fabric needs to match. In jacket, it doesn't need to match or a blazer. And this is all you need to know because you have to create your look, appropriate, authentic look. And the cut, cut is very important. Look at the salwar suit on this side, more straight cut, more straight, more formal, more flared, more informal. So these are the color, cut, style words you please note down and remember. And you will see your clothes in a new light if you really understand all these things. And of course, in a session, I can, um, I can talk betterly, but here I'm just giving you the guidelines. Again, this is my favorite. Harvard Business School has done research on makeup. Seriously? Yes, they did. And what they found? They found that lady is looking beautiful. Of course, they would look. What else? It is not the message that she or he, she is looking beautiful uh, when she is doing makeup. The people who have observed that lady has said, and it's a group of corporate executives, they have said that lady is looking more trustworthy, that lady is looking more competitive. So you see how the world is changing, how the perception is changing. So we have to really catch it. And we have to apply it because if I look a little more trustworthy and competent, actually it is helping, it will help me to grow in my career. 
And that's why I uh, tell all of you that, you know, sometimes because when we are babies, we don't need makeup. But as we grow old, we have pigmentation, we have dark spots. For male makeup is also available. And actually, I have suggested to one of my corporate client, senior corporate client, he had a black patch here and he was not feeling good about it. So it was kind of, you know, kind of not um, helping in his self-esteem. He said, you know, constantly it bothers me. So I have gave him a solution for this uh, slide found it. There are, there are makeups available in the market. And when I'm saying makeup, because it is again, childhood conditioning. If you have not seen your mother or your aunties doing that, you will probably will not do it. But if you see them doing that, you will do it. So childhood conditioning is big, is big on makeup. So I will again, request all of you to revisit your childhood conditioning. So many things we have been taught from childhood. How many of us have been taught that money is not good? I'm talking in a college in Bengal and I know how I am from there. I'm from a small town there. I know how our parents speak about money. Money is untouchable. This, is my, this was my childhood conditioning. I have changed it. I have worked on it. Money is wealth creation, and it's not a bad word to discuss. Why do you think Bill Gates have donated billions, 20 billions, I will be able to do it? No, because I don't have that kind of money. But if he has, and he has donated, if you don't need it, you give it to thousands and thousands of people that are there. I have personally worked in cancer in um, Tata Cancer Hospital as a volunteer. I have worked uh, with Old Age Home as a volunteer when I was in India, and I know how people need it. So if you, don't, if you don't need it, you give it away, but you earn it. Not everybody is in your position to earn. So this, why I'm bringing this, because these are the things we don't talk. We don't talk, but these are reality of life. So because we don't, why we say, because we see lots of corruption, that's why we have this kind of understanding about this. But I will request you to revisit your childhood conditioning to change your relationship with certain words. Now, this is again a very, very, uh, you know, kind of favorite topic of mine is your B. What is your B? Your B is your body language, your nonverbal communication. This is an essential part of your image and your soft skills. Your nonverbal communication, as I told you, when you are not speaking, you are still communicating. You cannot be neutral in your communication. Even if you maintain a poker face, something is going on and it will come out. So why body language, how it is formed? Our brain think very fast. We can think, Six, 600 to 800 words. Again, everything I'm telling you, all research based. So my PhD has helped me in one way that anything and everything I do, even in my image building, even giving somebody a makeup, I do it scientifically because this is all science. Art of looking good, there is a science behind it. So that's what I'm sharing with you. Now, our B is behavior and body language. Our body speaks constantly, as I said, we think 600 to 800 words, but we can't say so fast. We say 100 to 120 words per minute. Or sometimes, suppose you're going to your boss's office, boss told you something, you get upset, you don't say anything, right? Because we try to keep our emotions hidden in our workplace. We are more open in our house with our family members, but we don't do that in our workplace and that is the right way to do it. So what we do, we don't say anything, but our body gives away. And you know, which is the most honest part of your body? Your feet. Your feet just gives away everything because brain and face are close, close in close contact. So we can control the emotions in our face, but we can't do it in our feet. So sometimes you will see people is tapping, you know, fidgeting with the feet, doing something. So some, some, Thing, thoughts going on, something is happening, nervousness, we fidget sometimes, you know, we are sitting for the interview, we fidget our hair, fidget, that is nervousness. 
and that is the restlessness. And that you have to understand what your body is speaking to you as well as it is speaking to others. If you really understand that, and if you really understand body language, you can decode many people's, uh, many people, what they want to tell to you, probably they're not saying, but you will understand. Your body language speaks volumes about you. So this is the, of course, you can see how the body language is very uh, different here. And I want to focus um, on these words like your think, feel, act, react, everything starting with our clothes. Of course, when we are in our night suits, we feel more relaxed. Why? Because our clothing, clothes are relaxed. When you are in a suit, you feel more uptight. In a suit, you cannot have that kind of body language like the right hand side gentleman. So you be careful about how you are standing, how you are sitting, how much you are smiling or not smiling. Everything is coming out and you. this is all your part of your image building and your soft skills. Your body language is a huge part of your soft skill. Now, what are these things? I want to tell you very quickly because as we don't have much time here, so this is uh, your first is I will, uh, eye contact. Now, we all know that eye contact has to be there. You know, uh, when we are talking to somebody, we should look at them and talk. Now I'm talking to you. And if I don't look at you, and if I look here and talk, you won't get me. So you have to be careful that you also move your body. Suppose if I sit like this and talk to you like this, you will say, no, you look at me, look at me, because you are not, you are feeling it is not right. You are not conveying the message rightly. So you, when you are talking to someone, look at the person, sit, your feet should be towards that person, and then you speak. Then looking at someone is, again, it's a bit tricky, because the research again showed that you can hold your gaze for maximum 3.14 seconds, otherwise, uh, that person, if they don't know you, they will feel it is a threat. So you look and then talk and look and talk. And that is the way we all do. Some people can't do it. Some people can't look at your look at the eyes. If you are one of that person, so something mental uh, self-esteem issues are going on, you need to sort out that everything is connected here. Nothing comes from just Mars. Everything is connected in our mind and body. Some blinking, you know, if you are blinking fast, that shows that you are stressed, you are nervous. So even you're blinking or somebody is holding the blink, you know, not blinking, that person has a purpose. So everything, there is a message which we are sending. So better we send the right message in the correct way by understanding our body language Next is our facial expression. Now our face is very expressive and we give away many things. Even if we think that we are not expressive, actually we are. Our forehead, how much we are squeezing our forehead, whether we are raising our eyebrows, whether we are, you know, we call it bunny nose, that you like it, I don't like it. So it shows it's sending some messages. And your smile, as I'm saying, smile. You know, some faces are naturally smiley. You know, smiling face. Some faces are a little grumpy. So if you are on that category, you please practice. And I always say, make mirror is your best friend. In our society, in the middle class society, we have not, we actually school people, you know, young boy and girl, if they spend much more time in front of mirror, we don't encourage that, but I say make mirror because you practice all these things, your A, B, C, you have to practice it. You have to make it a part of your everyday life, a habit. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. And facial expression, smile, but I don't say you don't have to overtly smile. Then it will uh, look as very, she is trying. So smile with your eyes. And this is one way to influence people. It's a very high level of influencing, mirroring, smiling. I'm not discussing all these things, but you keep a smile, smiling face because smile instills trust. If you are in a party, 
you are standing there somebody is smiling somebody is not automatically you will go to the person who is smiling and you will avoid the person who is not so these are the facial expressions we need to understand and also you your gesture and posture posture is right now the way i am sitting or you stand your back erect now all of you please do it with me your back erect your vertebral column is straight it's not a army pose body relaxed shoulder pressed down shoulder and hands are open like no weapons open arm so you be in open arm that means you are accepting you are allowing people to talk to you you will understand them this is a posture rather than this we many of us we do this this is a posture it's called as closed posture but again sometimes if we feel cold we do that sometimes we do self assurance we hold ourselves so we have to understand the body language happens in groups it is not a single thing if somebody is like this suppose you and i have a, a not a good you know kind of conversation have an altercation or conflict and you call me and tell me that's one and we need to sort it out please come to my cabin or come let suppose we are equal like colleagues and i come and i say yeah tell me tell me what you are going to tell me so already i have taken a defensive position so you go in an open arm be in an open arm you stand like this talk like this have you seen people like this are you one of them so please see what kind of behavior and body language you are portraying no one likes to see this this is an aggressive posture so better let's avoid that and open arm posture as i said that you, you when you are keeping your head straight and head tilt head tilt is that you will see in many of you amongst yourselves head tilt means i am accepting you i am it's a good posture actually head tilt you will see the good people their head is always like this because they are already understanding you and accepting you so these are all the postures you have to understand and influence with your body language now power of confidence as i said confidence comes from within and comes from understanding your self worth you all are worthy you please don't tell me that oh you don't have this i know there are many things you don't have but look at the things and you really have to look at the things what you have if i get a chance to tell you my story i left my career when i was in 30s i came back in my 50s i went to the classroom learned this started my relaunched my career and today i'm working with the ceos doctors bankers senior people so if i can do it you can do it i come from a small town i come from a very small town in west bengal even coming to calcutta and being with my fellow uh, like uh, students they are now friends was a challenge for me because i don't come from a big schools like them but do i stop my life because i am not like that no you don't stop your life you make yourself stronger so dressing well as we said it helps improve your self esteem and confidence the way you, the day you go for a wedding you are all dressed up you feel happy and confident why because appearance matters clothes matters all these institutes and big institutes i believe institutes have done research on that harvard business school is a pioneer in this research if you google it you will find them all strong healthy body that i always say go exercise walk go to the gym do yoga do meditation which i have been practicing for long and it is very important i'm not young anymore but at least i will try to keep my body healthy then only my mind will be healthy and if you don't want it then i will say please look into this and don't tell me that oh you are aged you are see our life is just a span and we it is it, it didn't start with our um, you know permission it will not end in our with our permission so we have to really make it work for ourselves open posture induce confidence speak in confident tone as i said it all helps now coming to my next 
ABC communication. There are two V's in communication. You really have to understand very well. Now, all of us talk. You have heard speakers speaking. You talk yourself. You will talk again. I am also talking here. If you rewind and you see how I have exhibited my body language and communication because I have practiced it and you also have to practice. It will not happen overnight. So in communication, we have a verbal communication like the words that I'm using and there is a vocal communication going on. If you notice my voice, it's going up and down, little bit of drama there. We call it tonality of the voice. Now, right now sitting here, if I ask you, hey, how are you? Or I say, hey, how are you? Or I say, hey, how are you? Can you see the difference? The same words, how the words are being different. So the person you are and the words which are coming from you, your tonality is nothing but your emotion. Are you happy seeing me? He's so good to see you. So good to see you. Do you think she's or he's happy to see you? No, he's not. But then again, you're, you will check the body language and you will see the tonality of the voice. You will get to learn more and more knowledge about that person and what is the intention, what they are going to do. And it's an amazing world, really. So tonality of the voice, emphasis on the word. It is very important when we are giving a presentation. Suppose you ask me that, you know, have you done it, Swarnali? And I can say, no, I didn't do it. I am emphasizing on I. I didn't do it. Somebody else has done it. So where you're emphasizing, it is very important. And communication is, of course, you know the language. It is your language skill. English is a language which is used by the whole world. So it's better to learn it. There are language teachers. And if you really want my help, I can connect you with the right teacher. But you must know it. And also after knowing how you're going to use it. So vocal communication is you need to learn how you're going to use it to get more leverage for yourself in your office, in your corporate job, in your business, in your social situations. Clarity of speech is important. What you want to speak, you speak clearly. Have a purpose. I will say not only in speech, in everything in life, have a purpose. Don't send unmindful WhatsApp messages to everyone. Is there a purpose it is going to solve? Is there a purpose in doing that? So purpose means I'm not saying agenda. I'm not also talking about hidden agenda here. That, oh, I have a purpose, you know, I need to go and talk to this person because I need to get something out of her. No, I'm not saying that. I am saying you add your value to the whole thing. I am here. Am I adding value to you? I guess I am. Am I prepared? Yes, I am. So you come prepared. Preparation is one thing. Then practicing ABC is another thing. And then pause. I'm not getting much time to pause, but usually I pause. And you pause. You allow the other person to process it in their brain. Don't talk in monotone. Don't talk just continuously pause in between. Have you seen teachers pause? They say this and this, and have you understood it? Pause. So pause is very important, but don't take a prolonged pause. That becomes boring. Pitch is very important. Your high and low pitch, that what is the pitch, what is the volume of your voice, it is very important. Actual words are the words we are saying, and this is important, but I'm not telling you to speak like Shashi Tharoor or the, you know, use uh, that big words, but you have to express yourself for that. You need some vocabulary going so you can, you know, kind of, um, you can help yourself to understand and learn more words so you can use them in your communication to make your communication more effective. Another thing of communication, which I have not written here, that is listening. That is the first part of communication. Now I'm giving a speech, but when the others be Others were speaking, was I listening to them? I was listening intently. 
because it is my subject they were talking. And whenever in a conversation, you listen to that person. And when you're listening, you give nod. So the person will understand you are listening. And then you paraphrase and you paraphrase the sentence again. And you come to a conclusion. So listening is very, very important. Quality, ability, and soft skills. 73855 rule is by Professor Albert Meherbian, who was the Professor Emeritus of University of California, Los Angeles campus. And he has told us that 7% of your communication comes from your words. 38% come from your tonality, how you're going to speak. One sentence, all of us will speak, or two paragraphs, one paragraph, we all speak differently. So how we are going to make it more interesting, use your vocal communications. 38 coming from tonality and your volume, your pitch. 55 is your nonverbal communication, which is going on in your body language and in your appearance, your facial expressions. Next is these four basic styles of communication, which I want to tell you. And this is my last slide. Hope you are finding my um, session interesting. And I will find it interesting when you will apply it on yourself. Now coming to four basic styles, very briefly, I will go through it because on this, I can take a eight hour session actually. First is passive communication. How many of you here can't say no to others? How many of you? I was like that. I thought if I say no, that person will go from my life. If I, I thought I say no, that is rude. No, you don't say no rudely, say politely, but say no. So saying no is a passive, you know, not saying no, passive communicators can't really express what they really think. So they don't tell the truth. Passive communicators are always communicate by thinking, keeping other people in mind with whom they are communicating. Passive communicators operate from a situation, I lose, you win. So passive communicators cry a lot, sigh a lot, because they can't really say what, what is there in their mind. If you are a passive communicator, you have to change yourself. Contact me later on. You have to take a session probably, but you change yourself. It is all starting again. I'm connecting this with your self-work and communicating style, how you put across your emotions, your thoughts. There is a way, you don't have to be rude, but there is a way. Then coming to the opposite side, communicating style, which is aggressive communicators. Aggressive communicators, we don't like them. Are you an aggressive communicator? You have to find out whether you are one. If you are one, you change the style. Aggressive communication was old style of being the leader of the boss. I'm telling you to do this and some leaders are still there because I'm quite active on LinkedIn and I see LinkedIn posts where they talk about their bosses and leaders and which gets lots of traction because people don't like it. Then they say, yeah, I have a boss like that. Aggressive communicators are my way or highway. You have to do this, you do this, you do this all the time. Fingers are going, body language is aggressive. Voice is high, communication is aggressive. That is not good for the health of the aggressive communicator. They have to understand that. Communication, for communication, you really don't have to raise your voice. You have to raise your arguments. So communication aggressively is absolutely a no-no for the person and for others because that doesn't really, it's, the long-term work, the happy work will not come with aggressiveness. Aggressive communicators are always, I win, you lose. They are focusing on themselves. Next is passive aggressive. They're a very interesting type. Aggressive communicator, at least you will understand he's aggressive. He will, he will show that he's aggressive or she is aggressive. Passive aggressive, you will not understand anything. Front facade, facade is passive. You say something, that person is angry, nothing will be showing. No anger, not like aggressive, but aggressive in the mind or they think about it and the, the aggression comes. So they are also like, I win, you lose. I will see how we are going to win. Passive aggressive communicators also have huge health problems and they just shut. If you have an altercation with them, 
they will shut, they will not come to the table, they will not discuss. If you check you are a passive aggressive communicator, you really need to change your communication style. And these are all also personality traits that we see. If you really think about it, now you know. You will see that amongst us, we have passive, we have aggressive, we have passive aggressive. But the best communication style is assertive. What assertive communicators do? They operate from win-win. You win, I win. They understand their value. They have great self-esteem, high self-esteem, high self-confidence. At the same time, they understand others. They understand the other's value may be different from theirs. Their, what they want to say may be different from theirs, but they don't snub them. But assertive communicators has a boundary. They will not allow you to come across the boundaries. I urge all of you to be humble, keep your humility going, be soft and sweet, but be assertive. If you see somebody is crossing their boundaries, sometimes you have to bring the aggression. Sometimes we need to do it to make the work happen. And we all do it. But I say, don't be in the aggressive zone. Come back to your assertive self. You did something, purpose is done, come back. So try not to show aggression also. I'm not telling you to show aggression. If you can manage it being assertive, that is the best way. And what happens if a boss comes with a work at 6 p.m., the boss will not ever go to the aggressive one because boss knows that he will not do it. Boss will also if find out that passive aggressive will not go there with the passive aggressive also will do it, will not do it, make it delay, not want to, you know, will give many excuses, but finally he's aggressive or she is aggressive, he or she all won't do it. Aggressive will say, no, I won't because I have other things I won't. Passive won't be able to say anything, so boss will go to passive and make the work done. But you become an assertive. So if boss goes to an assertive communicator, what will happen? The assertive communicator might say, this is six o'clock, I have to go home. I have told my child that I'll come and take care of her the homework or I have some other work, sir. Tomorrow morning, first thing I'll do your work, but not today, today I have to go. So they set the boundaries. So let's all be an assertive communicator in our communicating style. And this is my last slide. I hope you all have, you know, kind of understood what I, want to portray here your ABC, what are the things you need to understand in your appearance, what are the things you need to understand in your body language, my video will be there in YouTube and you can really go through it again. And this is my um, details. I am on LinkedIn, please uh, join uh, me, send me a friend request, I will accept you. My Instagram is there, my Facebook page is there, and visit my website, which is swaharavidasgupta.com. I hope you have understood what I have said, the students I'm telling you, and I hope you have really, you know, enjoyed and apply. If you don't apply, nothing will happen. You apply ABC works. Believe me, I have applied it on myself. I've changed my life. From a small town girl, now if I'm ready to face the world. And I do that. So to get something, that phrase, you remember that quotation? To get something what we never had. We have to do something what we never did. So thank you so much. Thanks to all of you in Shurendranath College for inviting me here again. And thank you. So I will take all the question answers, please. It was a nice engrossing presentation, ma'am. First of all, there were huge and huge remarks about you. Everyone was enjoying. And uh, it was a really good learning experience about how they will manage themselves in terms of appearance, body language, behavior, communication. And uh, each and every student, they're, they're very new to this. And they, 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 most of them asked the, the, the main uh, the thing that they wanted to ask is how they can uh, create their own being in, in, in an interview, how they, how they will want to bring, they want to present themselves in an interview. Everyone is thinking about an interview situation. And that is the main question. The other question is, uh, 
most of them are very worried about their hairdressings, their uh, attires, and most of time these things don't uh, actually um, they don't have the control over it. Means uh, while uh, you go to a hairdresser, they can dress your hair. You don't like it, and they make you something which you don't like it to be yourself. And sometimes you go to and uh, suppose you want uh, uh, for my wife uh, can say you that the, the, this is from my part that she never wanted to look that a uh, bride uh, that jolly bride like, but yeah, she had to wear all those ornaments given to her by family and everything, and everything all those. Uh, Make uh, makeups, but she didn't want it to. But it was a kind of forceful thing that that was imposed. So what to do those situations where you are forced to do things? Suppose someone uh, has a real good blazer, okay, and now the now he has gone thin, and he is now um, have to wear a blazer in a party. And he, there is a family pressure that you have bought that blazer. Now you have to put it on because this is a party. But he thinks that. The blazer is not suitable because it's grown thin, and uh, he has got thin, and uh, and because of that, that blazer is actually ill fit now. So, what to do in those pressurized situations? Uh, thank you, uh, Shubhrojit, for yeah. uh, questions, and I will take it one by one. There were many questions involved. Uh, what you have told me. First of all, how should we start? Where we start? when we start and i think all the students even even who are in the professions when whatever stage in your life as i said that when we are born and we are going to go from this world is not determined by us and we have to live a life why not being living a more healthy life more fulfilling life fulfilling for ourselves so i need to know that i am doing the right thing what is right for me and we have to start somewhere i see you start with what you have what you don't have you're not getting it realistically now so what you have is good enough good enough and you start with that and saying about an your that blazer which is forcefully done or makeup or jewelry or whatever you have said i am coming to this point again and again be assertive being an assertive personality is not easy you have to work on yourself you know how you are going to say your nose you have to say your no kindly but firmly you have to create boundaries now if i am getting whatsapp messages from my 100 groups and some message if it is not very urgent if i get it at 10 o'clock in the night or 11 o'clock in the night or 7 o'clock in the night i can create a boundary for myself that after 7 o'clock i'm not going to go to reply to any messages there will be upset minds there will be some people who will be upset but can i create my own boundary whose sanity is important here my sanity who is going to get up in the early morning have some plans i have so the other person may not know this but once you set your boundaries the other person will used to seeing your boundary and react and act accordingly so i will say that you make yourself stronger you are an individual there are many childhood learnings which we have sometimes in our 50s also we think we are like a child and this is our ego state that is a separate thing so you have to understand what is your age what is your profession or you are a homemaker you have something within you you have to really focus on that and do something rather than watching netflix and tv shows and going for lunch and chatting with your girlfriends that is not the life you want you have to create your life once you create your life people will start respecting you more and then you start setting your boundaries no this is my time you know you and this is what i can do best and not saying you just to say no no i'm not going to do it there is a ways of conversation and communication and i urge your wife or your family members to follow that the other person will always be most of the time they will be unreasonable so you can show reasons 
at the same time, you can create your own boundaries. Assertiveness is the only answer to it. Thank you. Second question is, what should, what is the color of men? What should men wear during all their, uh, actually, um, uh, there are a few questions uh, regarding that. Uh, yeah. Can men wear yellow? Can men wear any primary colors? Or yeah. is it or will be always some, some neutral colors, some uh, uh, not that bright colors? Can men wear pink? The question you ask <laughs> that divided the two, uh, two groups of men. What are the colors that men should wear? Okay, so uh, first of all, anybody, anybody, I, I work with clients and I have get lots of Indian clients with a particular skin tone and this and that. So I get lots of, from senior people, again, from ladies, from gents, that, oh, I can't wear that color, I can't wear that color. Now, clear it all in your head. You can wear each and every color on this art. Celebrate life, celebrate color. Nothing is stopping you. Only thing is stopping you is your own self. We are our biggest, biggest enemy. Not we, our thoughts. The thoughts, that's why I said, are you in the right frame of mind? So are you in the growth frame of mind? And then here coming the color, you can wear everything. But in this world, we have six, five, six, six different kind of styling personality, clothing personality. All of us, all the people, these billion and billion people in this world are falling into six categories. Some like pink, some don't like pink, some like light colors, some don't like light colors, some like only dark colors, some don't like dark colors, like a black suit. Not every, not every man can wear a black suit. It is depending on your personality, whether you can wear it or not. So whatever the color you want to wear, whether it's red or it's yellow or it's blue or mauve or you know purple, you can wear it, but there is a but. But is, it's depending on your color we choose, we must choose, of course, as per our personality and also on our skin tone, there is a lightness and darkness of a same color. If I give you a red, that red can be thousand different kinds of red. So one red might be suitable to you. Another red might be suitable to the other person. So depending on what you want, your profession, your situation, your appropriateness, you wear that color. For a professional situation, I suggest you go for more neutral, more pastel colors, anything lighter or the neutral colors, as I said. But can't you wear yellow? Of course you can. There is a lemon yellow, which many shirt companies or t-shirt companies, they keep that you can always wear pink, again, depending on your personal style. What personal style category in those six categories do you fall into? If you want to wear pink, you very well go ahead and wear pink. But how you're going to match that pink with your trouser? So that details I can only take, talk about in my sessions, which I do. I, even the blazer, you know, somebody told me, oh, I bought a suit. That doesn't matter. That really doesn't matter. Does that suit the color, the cut, the pant trouser, it's slim fit, straight fit, European fit. Is it suiting to your body type? That color of the suit, is it suiting to your body type? Does the suit have some checks, has some stripes, no stripes? Everything we give um, tips to our clients. So. To answer your question, everybody can wear any color. Bright colors are not very, uh, is, should be avoidable because what happens, certain colors, there is a color psychology. If I come in a very bright red to take your station or um, to, probably I can do it because my profession is image consulting. So I do styling also. So for that, I'm, you know, kind of, Marcy is towards me, everybody will say, oh, she is image consultant, it's okay. But in a situation like an institute, probably red is an avoidable color in the professional situation. But you very well can wear red in, a, in your social situation and you must, you must wear bright colors. So your wardrobe, there will be 70 to 80% neutral color and 20 to 30% bright colors. So because neutral colors, what happen? You can match them easily. You can do nice makeup with neutral colors. You can do wear 
your jewelries with your neutral colors and also pattern the prints. You have to choose your print carefully. There are standard classic prints, there are class naturalistic prints, there are club prints, there are different kinds of prints. So what kind of prints you are choosing? And some people like to wear prints on print, like a trouser printed and a printed top. So there is a way, there is a strategy of doing that. We then teach them. So for the men, I will say you can wear any shirt color in your profession. Only thing the feet has to be right. Sometimes I've seen the men, men, even the ladies, they wear loose feet because they feel more comfortable to wear loose. But what happens, more you wear loose baggy clothes, more your sharpness goes away. So to look sharp, wear not tight, but fitted clothes. It is very important. And what happens sometimes if, if suppose if I'm little rounded, little put on, I have put on weight. So I try to cover it with more cloth. I try to wear loose clothes. There is a term which we use in our image consulting. It's called visual weight. So don't increase your visual weight. You are not that plump. But the weight we are covering your body, the cloth, fabric, and what kind of fabric you are choosing, everything matters. I hope I have answered your question. The to next present. question is, ma'am, uh, what about the falsity in image building? Suppose I build an image of myself, and then I, then I see that I can't carry that image. Means uh, people get attracted to me, but while they get attracted, I see there is no real me, my real reflection that what I see in those eyes is actually not me because it is something else. So sometimes actually what you are saying that there is a behavioral lab going inside you means every time when I react, I need to be aware of my uh, uh, reactions about my behavior, about, uh, about my appearances, about my communications, about the way I speak and then, then the experimenting process goes through while, while, while someone goes through this experimenting process, sometimes there, there are false images which comes and which we also not being actually, not trying to, actually we, we, we may build false images about ourselves, it means people can actually uh, see a different me in me and which I don't want to make them either ways. It's more, either ways it, it can be from me or in, or, or, other, or in the other way, I can see anybody as a different image while I see someone, I, I mean, means this image building can go either way false. So what about that? What about the correctional measure? Do I correct it or do I stay, keep it as it is? Yes. So the thing is in image building, uh, what the ABC I told you, first thing has to start with who you are. When you are starting with who you are and you are, um, then you are not going to do a mistake. As I said, you don't try to be anybody else. You are good enough to be yourself. You are worthy to yourself. So you find out who I am and what I'm going to do. So it is kind of getting into spiritual, but I, the work I do, it actually encompasses the four pillars of human experience. Our physical aspect, that is your appearance, your grooming, your accessories, your, your body language, and your mental aspect. This is your self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, which, which I told you about your emotional aspect, that how you can control your emotions. I have not told much because emotional regulations is a huge subject in itself. And I do EQ training and then your spiritual aspect. You find out what is your upbringing? What is your background? You are not your past as rightly Sanjit said. You are your present, you're going to be your future. Can you make your, can you see your future? Is there any dream going on? For the dream where you need to do, what you need to do for that? You know, there is, you first have to have a dream. And then you have to go towards it. Everything will start. You can have a weird dream. Do you know this uh, lady called, I forgot her name, some Richardson. She, this last weekend, she became the topper. I mean, first printer, like she came first in 100 meter sprint in US pre-Olympic trial. And she became a, an internet sensation. She came with her blue hair and blue nails and tattooed body. But talent 
his talent. So she felt that she wants that. She's this young girl of 21 year old, she's experimenting. So it's okay, you experiment with yourself. You are free to do, it's a free world. It's a free world. It's a free world I'm going to, because this is Pride Month. I, I don't know whether you know it about, or, about it or not. Pride Month in the gender choice, we used to give male and female. Now there is another choice is given like others. So you be inclusive. You can do whatever you want to do. This world is your oyster. You are sitting in Calcutta or Birbhum, Bakura, wherever, I don't know, but that is not your only destination. You are meant for a bigger world, but you have to start with the person you are. As I told that I am from a small town. I didn't go to a fancy English medium school. Does it stopping me to get the CEO client sitting here? How? 20 years I have not, 15, 16 years I have not worked. All my uh, friends are head of the department. Debashi is there in physiology. I was Debashi's classmate. Everybody is doing very well. I believed in my own timeline. Don't say that somebody has become principal, somebody has become head of the department. I couldn't be. Your time will come. You just work on your ABC. And you start believing, understanding who you are, and you focus what you like. You like to wear pink shirt? Go and wear it. You like to wear a red gown? Go and wear it. Whoever will say what, that is not your lookout. Let them speak. Right people will be with you. Rest will go away and those right people you want in your life. You don't, you don't have to get the whole world. Nobody got it, nobody got it. So it's okay, but you don't do anything false. No false image, please. No false image. You don't portray what you are not. Don't do it. You don't know how to speak English. You don't know how to speak Hindi. Go and work on yourself. There are a thousand course online. You don't know what kind of clothes you need to wear, how to color combine. People like us are there. So many image consultants are there in this, in our country, in this world. But one disclaimer here, not everybody does the work I do. I have integrated soft skill and image because I want to give a holistic image to my client. Image consultants can be only makeup artists, can be only style consultant, can only be you know, corporate uh, consultant, they can be in various jobs, but there are few who work like me. So when I choose my client, first I sit with my client and I see who the person is. What is your purpose in this life? Have you found your why? What do you want to do? Only you want to wear, watch Netflix and TV? Only want to you be with your friends and waste time? Are you working on yourself? Then don't blame that you are not getting the money which you're naughty friend is getting, don't blame anybody else. Take your charge, take your own responsibility and move ahead in life. So no falsities coming here, be your own person. Do you think I'm the best looking image consultant in this world? I'm not. I'm the best speaker, communication? No, I'm not. I have the best body language? No, I have not. Has that stopped me being me? Nothing will stop you being you, but first you have to find out who you are, what you want to do, where you want to reach. You want to be the director of AIMS one day? Write it down on your wall, wherever you stay. I want to be there. What to do to be there? Is there any steps? There are steps. There are steps. That is the good thing. But am I able to do that? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Because when you see in a corporate organization, when there are five vice presidents or six vice presidents, one becomes CEO. So not all. So whether I have the, so that you have to accept how far I can go. What you can do, you cannot really be jealous of the CEO because you have to work under them, under him or her. So you can do the best what you can with your life. And that's what you can do. You be the, you be better than what you wear, as I told you before yesterday. Now, regarding your matching colors, matching clothes, what jewelry I'm going to wear, 
what is the work jewelry? There are work jewelry. I do uh, Facebook shows where I teach jewelries to the ladies. I teach bags what they have to take. I teach shoes, I teach clothes. So there are, as I said, there are so many image consultants, come to me, go to them. There are help for you, but first you have to start with you. What is your dream? Where do you want to go? Do you have any goal? Because no schools, no colleges teach what I teach. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. I have got connected with some serious senior business leaders not business leaders, um, like business gurus, I will call them. They're not with any organization, they have their own organization. I got uh, chances to meet them and I have found out that world is really your oyster. You have to dream it. First dream, then you have to do small, small goal setting and you have to achieve your goal. I hope I have answered you. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Uh, quite extensively. Most of the other questions are actually what you have actually taught. It means everybody needs a quick brush up of what we have taught. And they and those questions are regarding that means how to all the body language things you have taught means they, those questions are uh, are all actually going going there that what you have taught they need a brush up of that. And there are innumerable thank you messages, ma'am. Uh, and everything uh, really is every every student, uh, because Shurandana College is a humble background, and most of them come from a very, they don't think about these things from a very small town. They come to a college in Kolkata, and they see everything, these big bazaars, there's all these fancy malls, and they really get wonderful what, what, what to do and how to manage themselves, what to buy, what not to buy, what to wear in a college, and they, they keep thinking about this. Sometimes they make mistakes, and, and hopefully with this consultation, they will be very aware of whatever they wear and what they do, how to behave, and all those ABCs, and really it, it was a real mantra to all of us to know the ABCs of your, of you, of your image. And thank you, ma'am, once again from our department. And it, is, it was a very nice and a wonderful lecture. And uh, over to you, Bonnaliti. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Shubhraj. Thank you to all of you. Uh, now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Meena Shri Ghosh to deliver a vote of thanks. Thank you, Bonnali. Good evening, everyone, our respected speakers and all participants. I deem it a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all. I, on behalf of the Department of Physiology, Shurendranath College, would like to express immense gratitude to our esteemed speakers who have been able to take out time from their busy schedule to grace the event. I would like to thank Professor Shonjit Pei for his thought-provoking lecture on the prospects of physiology, both in academic and non-academic aspects. Next, I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Proshan Priyo Nayak for his informative and inspiring lecture, which I'm sure would encourage our students to explore more avenues diverging from physiology and other basic subjects of biological sciences. I would like to thank Dr. Shornali Das Gupta for her excellent presentation on soft skill development. What are soft skills? How do they help in personal growth and social interaction, which ultimately influence our professional lives? This is an entirely new concept that we have come to know and I'm sure all present here have been highly enriched. I express profound gratitude to our respected principal, Sir Dr. Indranil Kaur and IQSC coordinator, Dr. Shutandra Chatterjee for providing the encouragement and unending support. A special thanks to Dr. Shukti Chakraborty, head of our Department of Physiology for organizing this seminar along with the departmental faculty, even amidst the pandemic. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the technical team 
for their untiring effort to make this webinar successful. Finally, the wonderful students who have turned up in such great numbers, not only from our department, but also from other departments of our college. We also have with us our ex-students who are pursuing or have completed their post-graduation. Thank you so much for your participation. With this, I thank all for your cordial cooperation. Thank you. Dear participants, please fill up the feedback form in time, uh, which, uh, that is within the 12 mm uh, m tomorrow, that is Monday 28th June, to get your certificate by email. And also let us know, how can we help you more in future? As I saw, there are many questions in chat box, the students which may not be addressed due to time constraints. I'll suggest you to put up your queries under the comment section of the YouTube channel of Shubhendranath College under this program. And also it will be uploaded to YouTube channel of Physiology Department Shubhendranath College very soon. We'll be in touch to your queries and let you know after getting information from our experts. So please keep in touch with us and wishing good health to you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, good night.